<clears throat> that was just an actual cough. <clears throat> alrighty, fellas. Well, alrighty, fellas. Well, alrighty. Good morning, fellas. How are we doing today? We can actually stream today, actually be here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We have quite the day planned. But first, I want to say many of you may have noticed yesterday my, I had internet issues and I couldn't go live, okay? So unfortunately, I wasn't able to stream yesterday. It was super unfortunate. You guys missed out on a stream, missed out on a stream recap, and I do apologize for that. So you know what? I had a rough day. I was frustrated and I did what any adult would do. I went and I made pizza rolls and I played Guitar Hero 3. But now we're here today, okay? What's up? What's up? Good morning. Good morning. We have some Pokemon to go collect over in our GTL. We're going to grab all that. 226K added to the stack. Always nice to see more added. Put me up over 38 million Pokemon. And I'm still 55,653 encounters dry. Could be a lot worse. Not so bad. But you know what? Still quite dry. We're going to head over to Ruin Valley. I'm feeling lucky today. We're going to have a Gamba in chat on whether or not I do get a shiny today. I'm going to head to the south uh, west corridor of Island 6 in Kanto. We're going to head down there. We are going to hunt for shiny Yanma slash Jolteon. However, I did just remember, thankfully, you do actually need a runaway Pokemon if you're going to go down there since there is Wobbuffet spawn. So we're going to go grab that really quick over the place of our Chandelure, which you don't need. We're going to head down there. And we're going to see what happens. We're going to see if I can get lucky today, break the streak, and get a pretty cool shiny in the process. Woo! Only at like 1.2 mil. That's pretty solid, dude. That is pretty solid. You're sure you're doing great? More Pokeyen to come. Hopefully the stream holds today. A Roxnoid, thank you for the five gifted subs to start the stream. You're already popping it off just to start the stream. I appreciate it, dude. Hopefully audio levels sound okay. Hopefully the stream, everything looks okay. Hopefully everything's okay, is generally what I'm trying to say. Dude, Arox, super fucking generous of you. Five gifted, over to Bo Boba. Boba Facts, over to Tactic Clown, Chaotic Narrative, Big Pen, and Hunt For. Thank you, thank you, dude. Stream is going to hold. The shiny is happening today. Dude, that's that's what I'm saying. You know what? Sometimes the bad, the unlucky stuff happens, you know? But it evens out, okay? I'm hoping for the RNG evening out. I do believe it works out like that if you do stuff long enough. So we'll see, man. Love watching videos. Never seen a stream. Yo, we're happy to have you, Dat Newt. Like this stream. Physically liking the stream on YouTube is super helpful. If you guys, you know, if you enjoy your time. Thanks for shouting that out, Xanarchy. What hidden ability do you think they'll come out with next? It's oh, anything, man. It's a shot in the dark. Um, I like to see what hidden ability do you think they'll come out with next. It really could be anything. It's, it's really a shot in the dark to guess what hidden abilities are coming out in like a new rotation or a new, a new batch, I guess. One of the hidden abilities I would like to see the most, please, I would love Poison Boost or po Toxic Boost, Zangoose. Um, Zangoose is a really, really cool Pokemon that has generally been pretty decent in lower tiers throughout Pokemon's history. But it's pretty unusable right now in Pokemon. Even in the NU tier, it's just so ridiculously outclassed. All this thing can do is be fast and hit hard. And it doesn't exactly do that well. As you can see, it's attack stat 115, speed 90. That's it. That's pretty pitiful, in my opinion. So, would love to see this thing get Toxic Boost. And then even if it got Toxic Boost, it probably still wouldn't be usable, honestly, nowadays. Like, if it got Toxic Boost two years ago, two to three years ago, it might have been usable. But they've just waited so long to buff Zangoose. So, much love to the Zangoose fans out there. It's a rough life for you at the moment. Do Sweet Scent Hordes work with farming legendaries? No, you do have to single encounter for legendaries. You can't get legendaries via Sweet Scent Summon Hordes. Really quick, good question. What's up, Jack? Uh-oh, who is that? Abigail! Sorry in advance. Why are you saying sorry? Thank you for the five, five dollars on PayPal. One of the best ways to support the stream. What could you possibly, you're giving me money and apologizing. What could you possibly be up to? What could you be cooking, you know? Cool looking dude hanging out. What's up, Shuckle? Starting Unova today, any mon uh ooh. Starting Unova today, any mon recommendations? I would pick up a Sandial and a Straggy. Hopefully both with Moxie and Decent Nature. While you're in Unova, it's on like Route 4. It's like that desert area. It's really, really easy to just pick those guys up. Even a Darumaka. 
Like that, that that route just has incredible Pokemon. Like Sandile, Scraggy, Darumaka can all be so good in the storyline. I would just pick up all three of those, honestly. Get decent-ish ones. You don't need anything crazy, but like if you can, 20 plus in attack and speed, even like 15 plus in attack and speed on all those mons with like Naughty, Lonely, Adamant Nature should all work decently. Hidability Bastion for Mount Silver Hordes. Does it have Mold Breaker Hidability? That's pretty neat. Apologize for the semi-comp reward. Dude, that is totally fine. That is totally... You never have to... If you've earned the points for that, you don't need to apologize. You're perfect. But that was very nice of you. I'll make sure to... Uh, we're going to take care of Twitch rewards tomorrow, guys. I think tomorrow before I head off on my little bachelor trip. My bachelor weekend. Um, that'll be a perfect time, in my opinion. Perfect time to get those taken care of. So we'll take care of all Twitch rewards tomorrow. If you're interested in a Twitch reward, redeem it either now, today or uh, early tomorrow. If you redeem it too late tomorrow, we, we may not get to it. Did you get your hair cut? Yes, I did. How did you know? How how did you... Did you just yes, Lucas? Because I don't have cam on, obviously. What What's the little birdie that told you? How do we get Shuckles? You get Shuckles just for watching the stream on Twitch. That's it. So all you got to do is watch the stream. Shuckles shillings. You get both. So there's two different point rewards. There's Twitch points. And then there's like the bot points. The stream element points. So there's Shuckles shillings. And there's Shuckles. Shuckles shillings don't actually have any like you can't spend them. It's literally, there's nothing There's nothing really to do with Shuckles shillings aside from gamble in chat for fun. Um, and then Shuckles you can use to buy Petrowski OT Pokemon or stuff like that. That gym stream went if I was consistently going to the gym, dude, gym dude, maybe. But even then, streaming on mobile is shockingly a little annoying. I echo located your voice with your mic and heard that you cut your hair. True and real information. I believe that for sure. Sort of for Yanma. Yeah, this is the best spot for Yanma. Hilariously, and <laughs> it's not really ideal. I believe it's, I don't, I don't even know if it's the best, but it's, you can get Yanma here and Jolteon. I'm really just kind of... This is a high-risk, high-reward spot for sure. Anyone watching the Fallout series? I've watched all of it within like two days. I was really... No spoilers. I was really impressed. Um, in the final shot... Still no spoilers. So fucking excited for the final shot. Um, and what else can I say? I, just, I really don't want to spoil anything. It's, it's, it's really, really... I really, really enjoyed it. Um... I was really worried. I really thought it was going to be bad. I had really low expectations heading into it. My own, literally my only critique, my, my one critique of the show is I don't know if someone who isn't a Fallout fan could watch the show and enjoy it. I think there's a, I think they do bank on you having a fair amount of prerequisite knowledge and there, it's like actually such a, um, does the show allude to a sequel? Yes. It a hundred percent does. Um, Sorry if that's a spoiler. I don't, I don't know if that... Yeah. Um, but yeah, how do I... Man, I feel like... Uh, I, I don't... Th th there's so much going on. It's such a... It's literally such a like... I don't know how to explain it. There's so much going on. Um, my mom loves it. I think it works. It wouldn't surprise me if it works for non-fans. But I feel like... Like, I would give it a 9 out of 10 as a Fallout fan. Um, I thought it was very good. Makes me want to play the games. Dude, that's, that's really cool. I... Yeah. I feel like there's so much that goes unexplained or so much that's like up in the air, but maybe that's just going to be explained more in season two. The world building is just, it's just so much world building and stuff for the most part. Like, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that's left untapped. Um, but dude, I love, I absolutely love the, the cast of like C tier actors I'm obsessed with. Um, I'm a huge fan of Johnny Pemberton, who's such a niche fucking actor, but he like actually has like a pretty big role in the show to a decent not a bit but he you know he's in the, i fucking love him um the other the one guy um he was in severance the the bigger guy who plays do do severance asked uh what's his name zach cherry he's awesome dude i fucking love the c-tier actors the like it sounds like they're i feel like they shouldn't be c-tier actors you know i feel like the actor list for the fallout show I, I just really they found an absolutely banger actress to play the lead dude the lead character is so good and i love that whole story going on um 
I'm fucking obsessed with the lead, the lead character in this story. Also, yeah, Moises Arias, who plays a really big character. I probably butchered his name. He is fucking Rico from Hannah Montana, and he fucking kills his role in this show. Like, what all the C tier actors, man, are incredible. All the C tier actors are so fucking good. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's a fun show. It's, it's, it's really good. Maximus did great. Yeah, his acting. All the actors. Oh, the actors did so good. Um, the main character. Um, a lot of the characters. A lot of the characters and directors from the show. Um, including the main character. Said that they all went and played like the Fallout games in order. From Fallout 1 to, you know, whatever. 4, like 76 or whatever. Um, which is really impressive to me. Like, dude, I'm a Fallout fan. And I've even. I, I, now, I doubt they finished Fallout 1 and 2. I wouldn't expect them to. If they went back and played Fallout 1 and 2 at all. It's impressive to me. I've tried to go back and play Fallout 1 and 2, and I really can't get into them. They're just a little too archaic for me. Um, however, I have watched, like, full in-depth playthroughs of all the lore and, like, all the areas. Fallout 1 and 2 are phenomenal games. If you can't play them yourself, I would go watch... I would go watch videos. They're phenomenal, phenomenal videos out there. I haven't played 76. I am mostly... I will say I am mostly a New Vegas fan. Um, Fallout 3 is fine. Growing up, all my friends loved Fallout 3, but I was much more of a New Vegas fan. Um, I'm just, a, yeah, no, Fallout 1 and 2 were, like, top-down, like, that old-school RPG style, kind of like Jagged Alliance, which is another niche, I guess, game, but, yeah, I tried. They're, they're great, 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 great stories, though. Fallout 4, I was not a fan of Fallout 4. I actually really, I really didn't like Fallout 4 personally. I wish I did. Um, there was just a lot of things that really threw me off in Fallout 4. Stream works today? Dude, yes. Stream actually functions. We can actually hang out. What's up? What's up? Um... I, I'm a Fallout New Vegas fan, for sure, first and foremost. And even, yeah. Wrapping up. Dude, congratulations. Told you, yeah. If you haven't played the Fallout games, all the Fallout games are on a great sale right now, for sure, on Steam. I'd recommend, I think if you're new to the Fallout series, even though it's not my favorite, I'd probably play Fallout 3 first. I think Fallout 3 teaches you so much about the world. I would play Fallout 3 first, and then Fallout New Vegas second. Fallout 2 formulaic. I have a lot of issues with Fallout 4. Um... This, obviously the speech system sucked. I'm a huge speech fan. That's like my, that's why I love New Vegas. Like speech is my favorite skill in any game. But even like people say speech is useless in Skyrim and I, it's, I love Skyrim. So I don't know. I really didn't like Fallout 4, unfortunately. I didn't like the, this is, this is a spoiler for the first hour or two of gameplay for Fallout 4. So I'm warning you now. So there's your warning um, for like a minute or two, if you care about that. Um, I fucking hated in Fallout 4 how they gave you power armor right away. I know that's like a really common complaint. Like you kill like a, a huge point of the Fallout universe is that power armor is hard to get and death claws are deadly. And in Fallout 4, you do you go against both of those main contributing factors of the world within the first hour. And it's so it really fucking threw it didn't feel like a Fallout game. Um Fallout 4 was so disappointing to me. I like I've literally tried to play it so many times and it's just so I really want to like it. I understand why people like it, but going from New Vegas to 4 feels like a spit in the face at the franchise. It's really, 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 really cringe to me. Um, but I get why people... I, I wish I liked Fallout 4 to be more gameplay. Like, I really, really love New Vegas. I think New Vegas just... I, oh, man. So good. Um, yeah, for a lot of people, Fallout 4 was their first game. I feel like as, as a first Fallout game, Fallout 4 is probably phenomenal, to be fair. Um, but going from New Vegas to Fallout 4, I don't, it just spits in the face of the world. A lot of issues with it but also like dude looking back fallout 3 and fallout new vegas are super clunky like i love these games to death and i don't notice it as much but like the lag and the delay in the clunk the clunkiness of fallout 3 and new vegas is pretty significant it's pretty significant um it's important to bring up going for zap burb i don't know what bird is it even zap to us right now i'm just kind of shunting and passively going for a bird right it's so delayed yeah the, there's noticeable lag and stuff and like clunkiness for sure and i love those games to death but for sure how much in world time elapsed between three and four well i mean it went three then new vegas then four in order but in terms of in terms of like timeline i'd have to double check i never remember oh i, I never remember. i'm pretty sure four is a prequel to three even right because the bombs drop at the beginning of four but obviously, but then they have like a time skip, not to explain stuff. Yeah, the timeline. Yeah, the timeline is. F I never remember it. I have to just Google it. The timeline's fucked. Just Google it. Yeah, the timeline is kind of fucked. 
I, I really want to get 76 at some point and give it a shot. Maybe I'll buy it on the sale, man. Yeah, 70, yeah, that makes sense, Shuckle. I've heard that they've hopefully repaired Fallout 76 to a decent extent. That's pretty cool, TJ. That's awesome. That's really, really cool, dude. Uh, I don't know if you're just trying to say a spoiler. I don't understand the point of this comment. It's like, I don't know if you're just trying to... Like, obviously, I've seen the show. But, I, I you know, you're just... Yeah. Um, you ever do PvP off stream? Yes. Well, if I PvP, it's only off stream. I never PvP on stream. Way too much stream sniping. And I'm not good enough. Yeah. I do PvP... Um, I can't focus. Too much backseating. I, I do PvP off stream and I always record it. And I do a little, like, a, a video out of some fun PvP, you know? Dig the Fallout talk? Yeah, I yeah, I really, really... I love Fallout. I'm definitely more of an Elder Scrolls fan. I prefer Elder Scrolls. I prefer the medieval world versus the post-apocalyptic futuristic world. Thank you so much for that sub, uh, TJ, man. I really appreciate that, dude. Thanks for eight months in total. Uh, why don't you use Swarm Illuminate? The reason why is because at this spot, you'll run into Wobbuffet, and he has Shadow Tag, so you have to have a uh, either a Ghost-type Pokemon or um, a Runaway Pokemon. What's up, Kent? Secret pad strap for PvP? Yeah, that's what it is. True, true, true. Bethesda games are all the same at their core. People always say that, and... I'm a Bethesda fanboy, I feel like, and I can't even like really disagree. Like they're all like they're all similar-ish. They're all like big open world RPGs. But um with like looting and exploration and checking every nook and cranny. I get it. Um I think people over I think people for sure over hate and over critique Bethesda. But it's because they made so many incredible games. What happened is Bethesda made some fucking incredible games and then made some mediocre ones. And so like the standards and the expectation was so high and they kind of went, they got a tanked, right? But like if a, if an indie, if like not indie, but like if some other company, if like Ubisoft put out Starfield or some shit, they would have gotten way less critique in my opinion. I think Bethesda gets super fucking hate, hated on. I don't hate Bethesda, but I don't enjoy them as of late. I share the exact same opinion for sure. Like I still, like, once again, I still love Fallout New Vegas and and uh, Skyrim. Those are my favorites. I'm excited for Elder Scrolls Six. Elder Scrolls Six will be the first video game that I buy day one since SSX 2012 released on Xbox 360. Ooh, big gulp of water. Uh, first time you stream a brand new player. Welcome, welcome, dude. I'm curious. Sorry. I'm curious. I'm trying to find a catchy Pokemon, but asking for a donation. What do you think I should go after? I would not ask for a donation. I think any new player can can catch up pretty quickly. I think getting your own stuff is super important. Um, I would go ahead. If you're in Kanto, did you say what region you're in? If you're in Kanto, you could go for a Paris. If you just get four gym badges, you could pay like 3k Pokien for a Smeargle. Um, Smeargle, Paris shroomish slash breloom like if you get four gym badges and have 3k pokien you can go ahead and get yourself a shroomish there's no reason to ask for free stuff in, in pokemo you know life is hard life is unfair right you can't really choose where you're born into a lot of circumstances are very different video games and mmos are the most fair it's gonna get in life so if you can't get through a video game or an mmo without donations you're gonna be fucked in real life not that you're you know that problem i'm just trying to say like you got to um you can you can make it in a video game you can make it in a mo you can grind if you put in effort and time and hard work into a game you will 100 percent get an outcome where that's not always the case in real life which is tough um you gotta just keep chugging but you can do that and you know you can do it in a game i believe in you guys I don't know much about 70s. I know it was really critiqued and a huge fail at the, at the launch. That's about all I know. Uh, why doesn't Pokemon have whales? It definitely does. I think any game with microtransaction has whales. Which is like Pokemon's on mobile, you know, it attracts that sort of audience. Um, unless I'm in the wrong circles, I do think a lot of the whales in the Pokemon community come from the Chinese community. That definitely is a thing. Uh, some people will extrapolate that to kind of racy things. And it's not really that. It's more so like... Um, Asian cultures in general just take video games more seriously and then also microtransactions are more normalized in those cultures for mobile games and for games in general. Um, so I think there's definitely a lot of whales 
in the in the Mandarin speaking community that we just don't see. You know, we don't we don't have access to. Um, it is decently true. What's up, Rumel? Pat believes in us, Uwu, dude. Rumel. Oh, should I spoil something about uh, inscription? Ooh, I don't know if it's a spo. I'm not sure. When's Poker Force coming out? Poker Force. I, I have no idea, man. No one has. I mean, the same the same timeline. No new news on it, dude. Um. Shouldn't have believed. We should go ahead and uh, this. This is Encanto. This is Island. It's one of the islands, though. It's Island Six. Uh, I've been live for 23 minutes. Let's go ahead and start a prediction. All right, guys, you've got 30 minutes. Okay, I'm giving you a full 30 minutes. Will I get a shiny today? Will I see a shiny today? I could have done a, you know what? Ooh, what I should have done. It's too late now. It's too late. I'll maybe do it for tomorrow. I should have done a shiny slash legendary to give believers a little bit more of an edge. Uh, but we're not going to factor that in today. Shucks. Yeah, oops. I messed up. So that's okay. No shiny BS legendary today? Okay, and what about shiny legendary? What about that? What are the odds of that happening? I'll do that tomorrow. Remind me tomorrow to do that. Give believers a little more of an edge. 110%? Yeah, I think the shiny legendary's gotta happen for sure. Are there more Chinese players than English players? By far. I always say that like, um, I kind of agree with Mist. Mist gave his numbers yesterday. If I were to, yeah. Um, yeah, if I were to guesstimate the population of the game, people don't realize how big Pokemon is because there's a language barrier between a large amount of the community. This is, this is numbers that I'm pulling out of my ass. So keep that in mind. I'm just guesstimating based off of anecdotal experience, but I would guesstimate that around like 50% of the Pokemon community is Chinese and speaks Mandarin. And then like 30% is uh, Spanish speaking. It comes from var various Spanish speaking regions. And then 20% is, is like American or US or English speaking or other. Um, so you know, if you're English speaking, you only see like 20% of the player base. And I feel like the from what I've seen, the Spanish speaking player base is larger. And then even larger than that is the Mandarin speaking player base. So it, the game is a lot larger than you realize. You just don't always interact with with those with players that are across the language barrier. Uh, yes, exactly. Pars. Exactly. I'm usually at her place starting. Um. Oh, man, starting, I think, June, June 4th. Yeah, starting June 4th, I'll probably be able to do a lot more webcam streams once I move into um, my new place coming up. There will be a lot more webcam streams in the future starting June 4th forward. Uh, when did Pokemon get popular in the Chinese community? This is a fantastic question because uh, it didn't happen for a while. Uh, Pokemon was not big in China until like 2017, 2019. It was somewhere around that year. I think what happened was, I think Pokemon got a Mandarin translation. Like, it got a translation. Um, and that allowed them to, like, play the, actually play the game for the first time. Because they couldn't play the game for a very, very long time. Um, uh, do they have Chinese characters in their OT? No. Uh, if, if you have Chinese character in your OT, it gets translated. Like, this. this is a great example. Usernames like this that seem, like, gibberish. Like this. Perfect example. These are translated from Chinese characters and they often make no sense. So like almost all of these names that you see, these like, oh, it's such a good example. Um, these are probably all, this is probably an English player. Um, this could be either, but a lot of these names like this, like a lot of this stuff is probably Chinese characters being translated like this. This is all Chinese characters being translated. Like, like what is this? Eight out of 10 of the first, of the Pokemon on the first page are all from Chinese players. Um, that's why you see so much of that. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So you won't actually see Chinese, like, characters in-game. Yeah. Oof. Oh, that's interesting, Shuckle. Is that true? Oh, uh, yes, you absolutely can, TJ. Absolutely, TJ. What are Ditto's at right now? Let's double check. 4,200-ish. Okay. Reasonable. Here, I'll buy a cheap one for 4K. Quote, unquote, cheap. What are 31 attack IVs at? Still 5,500. Pretty cheap. What about 31 HP? Pretty cheap. Oh, my goodness. So cheap. So cheap, dude. So cheap. That's crazy.
Yeah, that's that's cool, Shuckle. Any info on how long till raids? No new news. Whenever there's big news like that, guys, I'll always do a video on it. A lot of people come in and ask, like, hey, like any, you know, information on raids, information on like Gen 6. And I'm like, guys, you know, as long as you subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell, you'll never miss out on anything like that. It's pretty hard to. Um, how do you feel about Dittobox being sold for 240k? I've done this rant a million times on stream. It depends on the price of the Dittos. It makes a little more sense. If, you know, if, if Dittos are consistently going for 4,200 like they are here, it makes more sense. It does, but it's you're still cucking yourself. You're still being. You just want to hear me say cuck. Um, you're still being a cuck if you're buying for for for, for, for 240k. Um, however, like what I would do is I would do 4200 minus 500. That's the way you do it. And then this times 60. This is the this is the split down the middle. This is what's fair for for Ditto Box buyers and sellers to evenly split that extra 1k listing fee from. Um, now the seller, as a seller, you can really you can really set your stuff at whatever price you want to. There's nothing wrong with being a seller and pricing things whatever you think they're worth. That's totally fine. Um, but buyers are the one who have the responsibility to not cuck themselves. But if you want to cuck yourself, that's also okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just something to be aware of. Uh, Cardzy, thank you for the Twitch Prime. For Eight months. Holy time shit, time. dude. Thank you, Cardzy. What's up? What's up, dude? Our 2015 Pokemon anything special? I would say not really, but it can depend. That's not quite old enough to be worth anything. It's not really, yeah. Maybe special or meaningful to certain people. Maybe if you if you had like a 2015 comp, for example, with like an OT of a friend that someone cared about, like I would I would probably buy something like that, you know? But if you had like a, a Dusty Bunny, like 2015 competitive Pokemon or something like that, or Joshua, I'd probably buy that, you know, something like that, right? For Pokemon info. For 420k box, easy. Get your brain. Get your brain. Any advice on the Hoenn Elite 4? Four Blaziken sweeps up the dream of the champions wipes me out. Have you do you have a stealth rocks lead? Four Blaziken is a crazy strat. I respect it, dude. I would have a stealth rock lead. Stealth rock Pokemon with sturdy. I have a video on this topic. If you Google um top three tips to beat the Elite 4 Pokemon. There you go. Stop trying to convince my fiance to leak my cell phone number. What are you on chat? What are you? What are you on today? Hello? Are we good? Are we okay? Are there any Pokemon slash Are there any Pokemon slash abilities taken out of the game that some players still have? Um there's weird things like level 17 Gyaradoses, which used to be caught in the wild, and obviously it evolves at level 20. That's kind of strange. And then uh, the main thing is 255 Eevee trained Pokemon. I actually saw one the other day. Um, let's see if it's still on the market. These are super, 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 super rare and kind of hard to explain how they exist. Um, I'm not seeing it. It was a Nido King. Honestly, it was kind of underpriced at like. I think it was priced at like something. I don't know. Something ridiculous. Let's see. Nah, I'm not seeing any. Sometimes you'll see uh, 255 EV train Pokemon. So you used to be able to EV train Pokemon up to 255 EVs. But nowadays the game caps you at 252. And something happened where like the only Pokemon that actually kept. I used to have a bunch of of 255 EV trained Pokemon, but there was like a great reset or something or something that happened that capped them all 252. And um, the only Pokemon that actually stayed 255 were Pokemon that were like stored in players' mail or like on the GTL. There was something, something like that. I don't actually know exactly, but there was something very specific slash strange that allowed some 255 EV trained Pokemon to exist. The reason why they changed the cap was because those three extra EVs from 252 to 255 actually do nothing. They're wasted. At level 100, four EVs equal one stat. So those extra three EVs were quite literally didn't actually create a stat and were useless. So they just went ahead and capped it at 252 to make it a little more convenient and easier. Yeah, there's tons of vanities like that. Yeah. That's cool, Shamo. The Shuckle Strippers. What's up, Shizu? Imagine a Jolteon now? Yeah, we'll see. I think something. I'm feeling lucky, man, to break the streak. Dude, that's always a great... I actually had that... I had a similar experience recently, Tommy Bear. It's a great feeling, dude. Congratulations, man. 
I had a similar thing happen recently, and I did a video on it. That'll be coming out semi soon. Congrats, dude. That's always a lot of fun. So much nostalgia, you know? Imagine a rat. Don't. Can you even get Rattata here? Imagine a Ponyta. I would hate Ponyta worse than a rat, I think. It would depend. Are there even rats here? I literally just mentally block it out. So much nostalgia. Yeah, that's so cool, man. What's your favorite shiny? Pat, what's your favorite shiny from Kanto? I did a Kanto shiny tier list at some point. Um, the S tiers for me are Dratini slash Dragonair. Um, Shelder is up there. Oddish. I just like Oddish. No, it's not like a common pick, but I like Oddish. I think there might be one more that I forget. But what I can think of is Shelder, Dragonair, Oddish. I think that there's one more I forget, but I don't remember what I put S tier. Yeah, three times 31s are great. Pretty rare, but if you catch enough Pokemon. Thoughts on search for the ability? Dude, I love all the GTL stuff. All the new GTL functions, man. I What can I say besides they're incredible? I've been using the uh, has move function all the time recently for like egg moves. It's the Phoenix song, yeah. A shiny Spear. I really hate shiny Spiro. I would, yeah, that would suck. I really don't care for Spiro slash Firo. This spot is just mostly fails, you know. What's your opinion? Better holding my 2013s? I mean, it's up to you. Like holding 2013s, in my opinion, they'll obviously go up in value, but at a much slower rate than 2012s. It's it's up to you on whether you want to hold or not. Um, I think 30k is just so low for stuff like that. But we'll see, man. It's up to you once again. Like, it's up. To, there's no wrong answer. It's do you want short term profits or long term investments, you know? Yeah, how nice is that, German? That's so sick. Yeah, there's really no. Like, with, if something. A lot of things make good investments, right? And it's more like. It's not a question of oh, what should I do. It's more like what do you want to do? You know, are you are you gonna play the game in two? Are you are you gonna be playing the game in two years? Is a really important question. And there's no wrong answer to that. If you don't see yourself playing the game in te in two years, that's totally reasonable. It's a very human answer. You know, it's very normal. Yo, what's up, Randallum? Pat Rose, what's up, Rando? What's up, Bloodfall? I'm doing good today, man. I'm just I'm excited to f actually be able to stream, man. Yesterday sucked, man. I so I what happened was I fucked up, okay? I fucked up and I tried to up I tried to up my uh my quality on my stream and I got punished for it. I tried to up my audio quality and it was a wrong setting or it fucked something up. Um and all that happened was I recorded two videos in the morning for Retro Pat. Both of those videos had to get strapped because they were ruined because of the audio quality. So I wasted like an hour and a half recording those two videos. And then I tried to stream and my stream just kept crashing and the stream just like couldn't handle the fucking shitty audio. Like something weird happened. Um, so because of like one, I, because I changed literally one setting in OBS, I lost two videos, like one hour and a half, two hours of recording. And then a whole stream, and then it just it just all sucked. Yes, it was, it was all fucked. So I just said, fuck it. The day's fucked. Let me just, uh... I went and I played Guitar Hero 3, and I made pizza rolls. And I just tried to... Tried to chill. Were they Dungeon Defenders videos? They were not. Uh, better for better or for worse. Guitar Hero 3, the best one? By far, dude. I packed Guitar Hero 3 for my bachelor party this weekend. How are the rolls? The orange chicken pizza rolls. Oof. I could finally give my review. Uh, they were fine. I, they weren't, they were kind of not that, they weren't that, they weren't like good, but they weren't bad. They were just fine. Were they worth the price? Probably not. Were they like, I'd probably just go triple meat or like bacon. The bacon pizza rolls are bomb. I would say that there's better pizza rolls for sure. Pizza rolls, good guitar, man was living the dream. I literally was like, I'm, you know, today sucked at, you know, quote unquote work. I'm just going to go full man child mode. It's literally like the beginning of Step Brothers where he's um playing Guitar Hero, eating cereal, eating pizza rolls, whatever. 
Uh, do you think shutting for chance with Lords of Jodo spot with skin deals is worth it? I, dude, I would just go. I would just do one at a time personally. Um, but I don't like. I don't get why people. If you're going for the legendary, so if you're doing all of that while going for the legendary, fine. I wouldn't hunt dittos at the Jodo spot. I feel like going to the Hoenn spot's way better. But a lot of people go there. Thank you, Shamo. Have a cheat shirt. Yeah, that was kind of that was kind of it. I was like, oh, today, like today's shit got ruined. I was like, I'm just gonna take the day off. Essentially, I did some thumbnails and stuff. I thought I had done some stuff, but we ever do a drunk stream? I was actually. It's funny you say that. If I get a shiny today or tomorrow, I'll do a. I'll probably do a drunk stream. I'll do that today or tomorrow. We'll see. Not enough, Dad. I love Step Brothers is my favorite comedy movie of all time. It's like top two favorite movies for me. My two favorite movies are Whiplash and Step Brothers, and I, I do, I, I have three different categories for movies. Comedy, and then like, it's like comedy, horror, and then not those. <laughs> but that's, that's the, the, the third category is just not the, so Whiplash is like probably my favorite seri like serious movie, I guess. Whiplash is my favorite serious movie. Step Brothers is my favorite comedy, and then Saw 1 is my favorite, um, Thing. Are you a drummer? You would think that's so funny. You would think that two of my movies being Step Brothers and Whiplash. I bitten, but no, I'm actually not. I I don't know any instruments, honestly, which is hilarious. Recording this weekend, dude. True. I thought about do we might. I might do some. Uh, it's possible I do an impromptu stream from the laptop. Probably not. I'd have to pack my mic for that. I've wanted to watch No Country for Old Men for a long time. Haven't gotten around to it, unfortunately. Seen a few videos on it. Chad Wonder Trade just for fun. I'm here for it, dude. Why the fuck not? He drums his chat. Yeah, I fuck it true. Actually real. Actually real. Drunk stream easy. Yeah, that'd be a good. It'll probably be like a hangover stream if I stream this weekend from the bachelor party. Call me Nighthawk. One of the most underrated lines in that. It's just so dumb. I love. Oh, dude, I love Step Brothers. I love me a good man-child movie, man. I'm a streamer, okay? It's in my blood. What can I say? It's it's good memes. I watched the, uh, who has seen the, uh, Will Ferrell and John C. Riley Sherlock Holmes movie? That movie got some of the worst reviews. That movie was apparently, like, really, really bad. I saw it, and I thought it was fine. I liked it. I, like, maybe I'm just a simp for John C. Riley and Will Ferrell. I would give that movie, like, a 6 or a 7 out of 10. I thought it was fine. Like... It wasn't, like, incredible, but it was, like, fine. Um, people fucking hated that movie, the Will Ferrell Sherlock Holmes movie. I don't know why. I thought it was, I thought it was fine. I heard it was trash? Yeah, I heard, it. yeah, I, I, I was shocked. I was like, I think this is totally, I think it's like a six or seven. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It's not, like, incredible, but definitely no Step Brothers. Even if there's a fire, yeah. That Brothers may be the one movie that I can quote like from beginning to end. I think I know. I think I know the entire script in order. Wasn't the best. Wasn't the worst. Yeah, like it's definitely better than like like Jack and Jill. Like there's uh, there's a lot worse like comedies than. And even I've I've in the past on the stream semi defended Jack and Jill. Is Jack and Jill a terrible comedy movie? Yes, absolutely. But there is one plot point that makes it funny to where I think it's maybe worth the watch. Uh, if you've seen Jack and Jill, small spoiler, I guess, for fucking Jack and Jill, the old Adam Sandler movie where he plays, like, himself and his sister. There's a plot point that Al Pacino is in love with the female variant of Adam Sandler, a.k.a. Jill, which, I don't know, that's funny to me. The, the actor from Scarface having, like, being obsessed, like, truly obsessed in love with, like, female Adam Sandler, and she's, like, not into him. I don't know, that's a funny plot point to me. Um, but I feel like that requires, I guess, some fourth wall break to, like, appreciate about it. I think it's funny. Um, is that, yeah, dude, I really, yeah, that's a good, I thought the Holmes movie was, was solid. Zangoose breed? Nice, dude. The Zangoose fans coming out. Dude, hopefully not, Chad, yeah. Nick Cage doesn't do good or bad movies. I will, I would say Nick Cage does good movies, man. Fuck it. I love Nick Cage. Go his I love Ghost Rider. Is that like it's a cheesy as hell movie, but it's still good. 
uh i like it ghost rider the the american treasures is that what why can i um american Tre is that what i'm what is it called national treasure those movies are good uh, me and casey went back and we watched national treasure one and two within the past like three months they should show those movies in fucking school like national treasure like they're actually just so fun now the national treasure movies are so fun uh do you like the ted movies i'm gonna be honest i've never seen ted in my entire life until the last year maybe it was funny when it came out i watched ted one that was one of the least funny most cringy movies i've ever seen in my entire life like the jokes were so bad like not only were they offensive like you can get away with being offensive if you're funny but they were just offensive and not funny like they just weren't good um it was it was unhinged um that movie was really really bad i did not like ted the ted tv show yeah maybe it's good what's up buttered yeah i like ghost so ghost rider i actually also i'm not a huge i'm not a superhero guy like at all um but ghost rider had an incredible playstation 2 game that i loved i loved it so much um okay if you like ted more power to you i respect it but you have nostalgia for it i hated ted i was really really unimpressed um yeah, I, I like offensive jokes as much as the next guy. Like, I can, but, it, I mean, it depends. They can't... If, if the joke is, oh, they're offend they're funny because they're offensive, like, come on. How lowbrow are we? I don't know. I think it's cringe. I think it's, like, not funny. Um, But if they're, like, offensive and it's worth it because they're funny, I think it can... It depends, you know? And if the, bunt, if the butt of the joke is, like, the irony of it or whatever, like, it, it depends. It has to be... I think people just realized over the past 10 years that like there's a reason why a joke is funny and certain jokes were funny because they were like bad which is like not funny but if the joke is making fun of the people that are racist or whatever like then it can become funny and like it just it has to be done well um they don't release yeah I, I really did not like ted in an insult followed by a laugh yes that I, that's actually exactly what ted felt like um, always sunny is the perfect example. Yes. Always, always sunny in Philadelphia is constantly quoted as like this quote unquote offensive show, but they're constantly like making fun of racist people. Like the whole joke and it's always sunny in Philadelphia is that the main characters are all horrible people and they're making fun of that. Like that's, yeah, that's a great, great, great example. Um, what's another, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things like that, that like everybody always says like, oh, you can't do comedy anymore. Uh, you'll get canceled. And I, I, don't, I don't agree personally, but maybe I'm just, I don't know. Maybe I'm lucky because I'm not in the comedy business like that. You know, I feel like you can absolutely do comedy. Just make it funny. Yeah. Like, yeah. Farley <laughs> Day said the N word in fucking It's Always Sunny and then played Luigi in the Mario movie. Like, I, dude, I don't know. Like, there's still ways to, and that's pretty unhinged, but Comedy hasn't existed in 10 years. I feel like that shit is cope, but I don't know. Once again, more power to you. It's okay to, it's also, it's also okay to just prefer or like different eras of comedy. You know, I get it. Comedy just evolves and changes so much, especially like with eras and as you age. Comedy is one of the most incredible. I love comedy so fucking much. Um, what was I going to say? Um, one of the best examples of like, not comedy aging but you aging with comedy one of the examples i go to is like jeff dunham right when i was 14 years old jeff dunham was like the fun like i would piss myself laughing like one of the funniest things on tv if i go watch jeff dunham as an adult i'm just like really cringed out and i'm just sitting there so uncomfortably like this is like not funny um but i don't maybe i, I need to rewatch it or some shit like i feel like there's a lot of things kind of like family guy family guy is hilarious when you're 13 and then you go and watch it back and it's not as funny but maybe it's not as it's probably not as bad as people get as much as it gets hate or whatever but i don't know um i don't know i've never liked friends i've never liked friends or uh, what's the other similar show i always confuse I, i've never liked friends um never been a fan but some people love it and i and i get i can understand why and nostalgic and stuff um yeah i feel like i feel like he leaned into maybe a like teenagers and old people that I, maybe that's what it is i'm just not the demographic i don't know um seinfeld yeah i really don't i don't like seinfeld and i don't like friends i don't think they're bad i just i don't like them personally i love south park south park is a fucking fantastic show that ha has constantly like 
South Park has consistently been on the right side of history. And if they aren't, they go back and they like, um, they kind of like poke fun at themselves. One of the best bits in South Park was how in the early 2000s, it's like the climate change bit for those who like, you know about man bear pig, right? Man bear pig is a stand in for climate change. And a huge joke back in like the early 2000s was they, they totally dicked on Al Gore for saying, hey, not to get too political, but this is like a pretty, this is a pretty agreed upon fact. I think this is bipartisan, right? Um, climate change was dicked on, right? And, um, Al Gore was constantly presenting how climate change is this big, scary, bad thing that's going to happen. Um, and it, it was like man bear pig, right? And they totally dicked on him for, for doing that, saying he was just doing it for attention. Well, you know, 10, 15 years later, now studies and scientists all kind of agree climate change is actually happening. Whether you agree with what pace or how, how to solve it, you know, that's all more difficult. I don't fucking know the answers, right? I'm just here to like, we all agree that, you know, right? Um, they went back and they made an episode where Man Bear Pig was a real thing. He came to town and was like killing people and ripping apart the town. And they had to go to Al Gore and be like, hey, man, like we were wrong. It was a really cute way to like poke fun at themselves for being wrong. Um, that whole Man Bear Pig arc is very, 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 it's genius. It's so good. Um, yeah, it's so, so, so good. Yo, what's up? It's Matt. And then they even they even do a good job with um, kind of memeing on the current generation, which you know I'm part of, and and like they end up, the, the, this, I guess spoiler alert for the man bit man pair bear yep man bear pig arc. They end up just signing a contract with man bear pig and just pushing him down the road for like five to ten years and not actually solving it. Which they kind of they kind of they meme on everybody. They meme on both sides, which I which I like. I respect. I fucking love South Park memers. Um. Uh, what's up? It's Matt. Thanks for the Twitch Prime, dude. I appreciate it, dude. How you doing today? Versus the ads arc was amazing. Versus the... What's the... I don't know if I know the ads arc. Oh, the... There's been, there's been some good arcs. There's been some good... And there's been some arcs. There's even been some arcs in South Park that I've watched and been like, Ooh, I don't like this. And I, and I, but then I've gone back two to three years later and been like, Huh, maybe I didn't... You know, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I, you know, I, I, I love South Park for sure. Sarcastaball. Fun fact. This is really fuck it. This is. I'm gonna get you guys. I'm gonna give you guys a vulnerable little factoid. Okay. There. The night of the last Super Bowl, I got really, really drunk. Like I think the drunkest I've ever been in my entire life on accident. I got way too drunk on accident, and I ended up like so drunk that I was like passed out in the fucking like in my fucking shower, like laying in the fucking tub. And Casey had to convince me to like get up and like go the way she convinced me was we went and we watched the the sarcastical episode of south park and that's how she like convinced me to like get up and get off my ass and like go watch that in the living room and then go to bed i wanted to watch south park so i wanted to like do i wanted to stay up and do i was so fucking plastered holy shit it was it was embarrassing um but it was a good she would fair she took care of me it was very cute it was a good meme. W Boja, yeah, she was like, okay, sweetie. Like it was, it was on the, it was on the South. Park. It was on the uh, Super Bowl. I was really fucking sad because the Ravens. It was, it was, you know, it was the Super Bowl, and the Ravens just barely didn't make it, and kind of a sad way. Like they really, sh you know, they were the better team in my opinion. Uh, how on accident? If you've ever drank at all as an adult, I feel like you probably understand. Like sometimes you accidentally get too drunk. Um, it just happens, you know. Like some, if you. If you drink two glasses, like, cause what happens is the drunker you get, right? The easier it is to lose track of number one, how many drinks you've had. And also number two, you, it, alcohol doesn't taste as bad. So the drunker you get, the drunker you get the, like the sweeter, like the, the more, the drunker you get, the more wine starts to just taste like juice and it just becomes the drunker, the thirstier. Yeah. I, I just, I was dumb. Um, yeah, it's it's Jover. Yeah, it's really easy for that to happen. Which is why usually I like set, and obviously like I'm young. It's time. It's time. Like, it's the time to be young and be dumb and make. It's good to make some you know bad decisions and make those mistakes while I'm young. Um. Oh hell yeah, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Ugh. Yeah, she had to, she literally Googled South Park football episode because I like wouldn't shut up about the Super Bowl and stuff. I kept asking her, I forgot who won. I kept, a I was so drunk. I kept asking her like who won the Super Bowl. I, I literally couldn't remember. It was a crazy, 
crazy meal. I paid the price, dude. That next morning, not even, I, I think I woke up at like 6 a.m. just puking and shitting my brains out. I, and I was like shivering cold, but also super hot. It was, I was in insufferable agony. I paid the price for getting too drunk. That's fucking healthy reminder, guys. Whenever you drink or do drugs, you are, you are, it's an equivalent exchange. You're not just getting a better time for free. You're paying with your wallet. You're paying with your sanity. You're paying, you're paying with your next day. Um, yeah, maybe alpha. I, I felt horrible. Um, and it was a like 20 to three days long. I was, I was, I was like clean off that one in like six hours to be fair, but I like four to six hours. I felt better. Usually if I'm hungover, the scary thing about being hungover is the next day you wake up and you're hungover and you're like, oh my God, I feel like shit. I'm never going to drink again. But then by like, 3 p.m. rolls around and you're like, oh, I could, you know what? I feel better. Maybe I could drink tonight. And then 6 p.m. And then if the if the homies want to hang, <laughs> it's fucked. Lots and lots of water. When I started drinking, that's what I would do. If when I started drinking, when I start, I was so much smarter when I started drinking. When I was when I when I started drinking, I, every like drink of alcohol I would have, I'd have one drink of water, right? So like one cup of water to one beer was like my ratio or like one cup of water to like what would be mixed. I didn't really, I mixed drinks mostly. Um, one vodka, one cup of vodka root beer, one cup of water. And when I did that, I literally never got hung over. It's actually like insane. Um, but as I've gotten, as I, I've just gotten less, I've gotten stupider, which is true, which what it does to you, true and real. Uh, just keep drinking. Yeah, that's, I've, I've never drank while on a hangover. I don't think I've ever, I've never pushed through like that. I've never done that. We'll see. Uh, good for you. I think that's good, blood. That's good. Right for weeks after. Yeah, I usually, yeah. It's good to have a little, have a greasy meal. Oh yeah, I always, that's, that's also a huge negative of like, if you're like trying to like diet or like, uh, you know, whatever, like lose weight or some shit, drinking is bad. Not only is drinking the calories, that's the obvious one, right? But like, the next day you have to you have to eat a big meal so i feel that's true you say vodka root beer absolutely dude my favorite mixed drink my my petrowski special is diet root beer and vodka i love it so much root beer is the sweetest like it's so sweet you can you can hide you can mask so much vodka with a nice diet root beer i'm a huge fan of uh imagine like so take like a red take like a red solo cup right Put like two and a half to three shots, probably three shots of vodka in there, and then fill the rest with diet root beer. And that's like that's a Petrowski drink. That's a Petrowski drink right there. Three shots of vodka, fill the rest of the, the red solo cup with root beer. Then you're cooking. Hard to make me ill. I love I love me a nice root beer mixed drink. I'm a fan. I've never, I've never had that. Now, now I need to try it at some point, Kyle's vodka sprite. I really, really don't like vodka with light drinks. Everybody seems to like. It's obviously like that, which is I don't know. I, I don't know where my drinking taste comes from. It's from my fucking. I don't know, dude. Um, I don't like vodka sprite. I don't like vodka water. I've been recommended. I can't stand that shit. Um, I don't like gin and tonic. Yeah, I dude, I do not like vodka. I like. I prefer vodka with a dark drink which everybody says it should be the opposite um but i love a vodka vodka diet coke is fine vodka root beer crown apple never had it dr pepper um okay a secretly s tier drink is this is actually so fucking good such a, it's so niche but it's such a good mixer um strawberries and dr pepper strawberries and cream zero sugar right so i always try to do zero sugar zero calorie mixtures because i prefer the taste which is a, you know personal preference and if i can keep the calories lower that's nice so strawberries and cream dr pepper with whiskey so i'll do like one to two shots of whiskey and then fill the rest with like a can of strawberries and cream dr pepper and that's that's dude whiskey and that strawberry and cream flavor it's actually so good it's actually so so tasty um Jack and Coke. I just don't like regular Coke. I've never had Jack and Coke. I'm sure it's good. I just, I don't like, I don't like Coke. Coke Zero I would do, yeah. Sailor Jerry's, I'm not familiar. I always like hearing people's, I feel like people have so many different tastes when it comes to drinks, and I like hearing the recommendations and all the different options. Uh, 
Uh, did, did Xperia get a shiny? Let's see. Dude, congratulations. It was even a secret? That's insane, dude. Yeah, what was the species? It was a Pidgey? But dude, that's a secret shiny Pidgey for your first shiny is incredible. Spice rum. Gotcha. Lighter than crack. I have a friend who loves rum. He's obsessed with rum. And he he always has Captain Morgan's. And you named both the brands. Captain Morgan's and Kraken. He's a huge fan of. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that actually sounds incredible, BJ. Holy, I got to try that, BJ Hammer. Uh, did you finish hatching those eggs? I am going to not say. We're going to keep it a secret. You don't like whiskey? I don't. I like whiskey. I, I don't mind whiskey. Whiskey, I'm neutral to. I don't know if I've had... I don't think I've had a whiskey that I can drink neat yet. Like, I haven't had that. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that sounds so good, Sloth. Uh, thoughts on legendary lores? The effect, pretty typical. It's pretty normal. The effect of legendary lores is very good. They're way too expensive for what they're worth. Um, legendary lores are going to end up costing you multiple hundreds of thousands of Poke Yen per hour. And they're, it's still going to take you multiple hours to get your legendary. Like, I'm pretty sure they take around... I'm pretty sure they end up being around 300,000 Poke Yen per hour. Something like that. So, if it, even at 300k per hour... If it lowers the rate to thir down 30%, so we don't know the exact legendary rate in Pokemon, so we're going to have to guess. So let's say that it's the middle ground. Let's say it's around five, 1 out of 5k for the legendary rate. That makes around sense, right? Let's do that times 0.30. That's going to give us mi minus 1,500, so we do 3,500. So let's say, let's say that, for sake of the argument, legendary lore makes the, sh the legendary rate 1 out of 3,500, right? And let's say that you do around 300 encounters per hour while single encountering. That's pretty normal, right? So divided by 300, 12 hours. So imagine taking 12, let's say, yeah, 12 hours times 300,000 Poke Yen per hour. You're spending 3.6 million Poke Yen just to save like four to six hours on your legendary hunt. If you're making like a million Poke Yen per hour at some money making method, then maybe that's worth it. But like, that's pretty, that's pretty 0.0001%. That's not many people. That's ridiculous. I would never do that. Legendary lures are fun and they're exciting. Hyper financially not worth it. Um, do do do. You do tequila? I cannot stand the taste of tequila. I, now, tequila and like a margarita. Or like a frozen mart. I don't mind. Tequila shots are the most disgusting shot to me. I do not. Maybe there's some really expensive one that obviously tastes good. I mean, that's the outlier. I fucking can't stand tequila. Um, dude, good for you. I'm a, I'm a huge advocate. Obviously, I'm someone who partakes in this kind of fun little party stuff like as I'm young, but I'm a huge advocate. Even though I do it, I'm a huge advocate of people not drinking and not. If you can go your life without drinking, I think it's better. If you can go your life without doing drugs, it's probably just optimal. It's probably just better. I would probably recommend that. Um, it's definitely a trade-off. It, it's there's no like it's an it's a yeah. Oh, is the Cloud Nine ability actually do it? Like cancels all weather, you know, benefits, right? Cancels out the weather. Pretty much it. Do you have a specific question in relation to it? Yeah, legendary lords are super. Forty-five is so many, dude. Damn, so expensive. I hate, I hate tequila shots. Shots in general. I'm gonna be honest. I just don't like shots, man. Like, I'd rather pour a mixed drink with like three to four shots in it, and then just like chug that than than actually do shots. Like, why, why would I, I? I don't know. I shots themselves. So I just pour a strong mixed drink. Um. Absolutely. I'm once sorry to sorry to talk so much about alcohol and about that stuff in front of people who are sober. I want to recommend once again, you guys are the fucking heroes. More power to you. Like you're killing it. It's 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 objectively more optimal to live a sober life, in my opinion. I like I would I would keep that up. I'd recommend it. You know, I don't want to make anybody feel. Yeah. Uh, went down fucking from yesterday. Good. Good. What are you hunting right now? This is it the best spot? Was it the best spot? I don't even know if it's the best spot. But you can get Yanma here and Jolteon, and then I'm kind of open for the legendary as well, just for fun. I'm kind of just here for for memes. Doesn't bother me. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough, Alpha. That's also good on you to be to be sober while living around like roommates and stuff that do that. It's so much harder. 
Tequila is tequila. True and real. Chris. I think tequila is fine in, in mixed. I just hate tequila shots. Tequila is fine in mixed drinks. It's fine in it's fine in margaritas, you know. Obviously, you're memeing, but yeah. Uh, I know. I think that's super based. I don't like the taste of most beers, for sure. I think most beer, you're just drinking it because it's like, okay, well, I've just got to get it down. Like, I don't like most beer. Um, I, I think it's an acquired taste. Like, I feel like the older I get and the more I have, the more I do kind of like the taste of, like, Bud Light or Budweiser, which is very funny. Like, I think it's just an acquired taste. I think the more you drink, the more you start to enjoy it. Humans are very... Humans acclimate, you know? Definitely an IPA guy. Dude, no. I'm a baby. I can't stand an IPA. I hate it. Um, I like strong drinks. I, I don't like... Uh, I don't like that that weedy... Uh, that barley flavor. Oh, gross to me. What's up, Ken? Bro! Bro, Ken says, bro, bro, please help. Why don't you just say what you need help with instead of uh, typing, bro, bro, please help in the chat. What's up, man? How can I help you today? Just ask your question, dude. Great summer beverage. I, summer shandies are kind of a nice little summer. But bro, yeah. Um, I love crap, but yeah, more power to you, man. I get it, dude. Uh, I have a friend who just has like a craft beer with dinner. Not maybe not every night, but like a couple couple nights a week. Please read it. I put a message earlier. All right, Ken. I don't know if you're. Ooh, 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 I'm sorry. How do I not? All right. Step one to being in a live stream. Right. There's a lot of other people that aren't just you. So often I'm going to miss chats. There's usually around 200 or so people in the chat. If I miss your chat feel free to to copy and paste it every two minutes Un until i read your chat unless you're just like, a, like you know, obviously i'm dodging person Un until i read your chat feel free to just retype it every every two minutes to expect me to scroll up in my chat like if i were to sc i'm scrolling up like i'm actually scrolling up so far before i ever see the question you asked so you want me to pause the whole stream just to scroll all the way up to maybe find your chat. Like, it's so just, uh, there's a lot of people here, man. It's not just you. Just retype it. Retype it. I feel like it's okay. I don't mean to go too hard. Like, if you're not used to watching streams, how the fuck would, you know, you don't want to, you just don't mean to spam. You don't want to, you know, it makes sense. Um, in your opinion, I saw this little chat. What do you think about giveaways and global becoming a spam and bonkable? Then typing, you know, Chinese, those things up as spam. What do you think about giveaways and global become a spam? Uh, it'd probably be situation dependent. I just don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. No, no, no. Sorry. No, wor no worries, Ken. No, hey, no worries, Ken. Don't worry about it. Yeah, no, hey, don't worry about it, Ken. If, you, if you, everybody's gonna learn somehow, like there's nothing wrong. Sorry if I went too hard on you. You know, I have no. You're perfect, man. Just feel free to uh, retype your question. I'll, I'll try to get you an answer, man. I'll try to help you. Favorite E4 champion room. I like that question. Um, probably like Bruno or Agatha. I just spent so much time in those as a, as a kid, losing. I lost, dude, Ag I was stuck on Agatha for so long as a kid. What's up, Golden? Hit Agatha, dude, it was so hard. Bruno, is that his name? That's who goes hard. Expected a shiny Fira? Hopefully not, dude. Hopefully not. Yeah. Ghost just felt like the no face cam today. Yeah, I'm at my girl. Whenever I'm at my girlfriend's place, I don't have a setup to use face cam. Hope you get a shiny suit. What's up, champion? Sorry I missed your chat earlier. I'm currently going through the storyline on my second account. I have more resources and all for my main accounts. Is her playing? You talking about the game? Hell yeah, I'm just a bunch of motivation on the storylines. Do you have any tips? Oh man, I'm gonna be honest. Man, Champion Black is asking me for tips on how to find motivation to finish the last two regions of a storyline on an alt account. Dude, I'm going to be totally honest. I hate storylines. They burn me out more than anything. If you are burnt out from the storylines, simply take a break. Go play a different game. Go shiny hunt on your main account. Go do something else and come back because 
in my opinion, if you're burnt on storylines, they're just going to be miserable, insufferable, so much pain, so much annoyance. Um, having alt accounts done are incredible and having, you know, all the storylines done on them are incredible, but like maybe just take the benefits of those three, you know, regions being done for a little bit and then go do something else. I just, I would really recommend just taking a break if you're stuck on storyline burnout because that stuff, I understand that a lot. I hate that stuff. I'd rather shiny hunt for 500 hours than play through like two storylines, like storylines who they are maybe even once at once. I hate it's annoying to me after all, you know, after all these hours on it. Yeah, just follow a guide and get it done as quick as possible. But I would just, I would come back to it. What gen the red fight is? Wait, what do you mean? By speed running it? Uh, hey, that's okay. Caught a Smeargle a few days ago. Caught a Smeargle a few days ago. I leveled him up to level 100 without, without learning him moves. That's totally okay. You can go ahead and... Um, you can actually heart scale. If he's level 100, you can actually heart scale and relearn sketch on him three or four times or whatever you need to. Uh, you can actually always relearn sketch on Smeagol using heart scales, which is super nice. Uh, what region order thing is the most fun? I have a, I cover that in my, in my video. In my, if you Google what's the best region in Pokemon, really in-depth video. Like really, I, I try to have videos on most topics and that video is just so in-depth on region order region power positives and negatives of each specific region it's such it's such good depth i don't i'm not not every video i put out is like a super in-depth detailed guide and i'm not proud of every video i put out but that's a video that i'm proud of you know that's what's up xerix how you doing gamer Ooh. That's interesting, Sato. Yeah, that's, dude, that's a huge reason why that series exists. Just be like background content, you know? Do you have a favorite video that stands out to you? Yes. One of my favorite videos I've ever made is my rare shiny hunting, my rare egg hunting guide. Uh, it's not, it doesn't get that many views. It's not that popular because it's just not that, not that many people have the Pokeyen and the time to egg hunt, right? But it's one of the most in-depth guides I've made. And I, I've spent, you know, thousands of hours rare hunting and egg hunting, so... It made sense. I had a lot of passionate opinions and I think I think some pretty good detailed little tips and tricks that other people may not know. Um, I, I'm really proud of it. I put some editing into that video as well. I'm very proud of my rare shunting god. I'm not proud of every video I put out, but that video I'm very proud of. Um, why are you wearing shorts as a professional? Dude, fuck that. I, I could never work a job that where I couldn't wear shorts. I love shorts, man. I can't, I hate, mostly, I hate lawn pants. I fucking Thank hate lawn pants. Money, Got me acting up, God damn it, Xerix. Yo, Danko, thanks for the two months, dude. Two months of Prime. Thank you, thank you, gamer. It's appreciated. Hopefully the content's been helpful or entertaining background content as always, dude. What's up, what's up, man? Showing off his calves. I always hear the meme about like, uh, the real trick to having good calves is just get fat and then lose and like walk around and carry your fat ass around and then lose the weight and that's the best way to have the best cat which is super true now i'm stuck on that losing blood i lost the weight at one point and my calves stuck around which was it definitely stands out um i feel like you can kind of see that in men you can see men who have lost weight by how big their calves are for sure it's it's pretty noticeable um it's pretty, no, you know, from obviously from my anecdotal experience, I'm no, I'm no, what's it called? Personal trainer, but, uh, calves are 80% genetics. That's probably also true. I, I have no real idea. I'm just going off of memes. Who got in the Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole beef? Uh, I have no idea what their beef is. About. I just, I don't pay attention. Um, I have no idea what their beef is. Um, out of those three artists, I mean, I like J. Cole the most by far. I'm not really a Kendrick or a Drake fan at all. So, I mean, hard I lean J. Cole, but I don't know the beef. Maybe he's wrong, you know? Um, bro, I got my account banned. If you are if you got banned, you go through a support request on the forums. I can't help you if you got banned, right? Going to me if you get banned is kind of like, um, imagine imagine you got banned. What's, a, what's an analogy here? That's obvious. Um, imagine you got banned in Fortnite and then like went and told like Ninja 
Like, hey, Ninja, I got banned on Fortnite. Can you please help me? And it's like, he's just a player. Like, what are you, what, what are you talking about? Like, go through the, if you got banned, go through the appropriate, um, I was not knowing it's prohibited to buy an account. Well, the, that information is in the rules, man. That information is in the, uh, if you, if you didn't read the rules, that's your response. That's like, that's like breaking a law. But saying, oh, I, but I didn't know it was illegal. Like, well, it's your responsibility as a civilian and a citizen to understand and familiarize the laws. You can't make that claim. That's not, that's not, doesn't, it's not a get you out of jail free card. Um, if you didn't read the terms of service and you broke a rule, that's on you. Do you think Magic Guard Alakazam will ever be added? Do you think Mal Magic Guard uh, Alakazam will ever be added? Absolutely. Because uh, Alakazam is pretty weak right now. I think it actually could totally be added in. Maybe it would be a relevant threat again, either in OU or UU. But right now, uh, Alakazam is in NU, and I'm pretty sure it's even struggling in NU. Look at this. Oh, dude. How much power creep is happening? Look at this. 6% usage, 45% win rate for Alakazam and NU. For newer age Pokemon fans, this may seem obvious, but... Dude, for people who played Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4... Alakazam was a, like, a top-tier OU threat for... For a decade or two. Like, that's crazy, you know? My 800 plus hours, I was not knowing. It's still your responsibility, man. It seems like you broke a rule. Um, It seems like you broke a rule and got punished for it. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Which sucks. I mean, I'm, I'm at the end of the day, I'm really sorry you lost your account. Like, that's still... And I feel for you and I empathize. Like, that's really sad. That sucks and it's painful, right? But, like, it probably is still justified, you know? And you have to kind of just take that and move on. Like, I would just make a new... If you want to keep playing, make a new account and go on. If not, understandable, but... Mr. Sub? What an arrogant fucking streamer. Dream Makers! And Cody! Oh, shit! Wait, Cody! Six months? You've been awesome to have around in chat, Cody. Much love to you, man. Uh, you're never late to a stream, dude. What's up? What's up? Cody and Dream Makers, thank you so much. Dream Makers for two months in a row. Thank you, thank you, gamer. Sag ignored? I got you, Cody. I'm sorry. You've been awesome to have for the last six months, man. Much love to you, dude. I would love, love, love to see some Gen 6 Pokemon added for sure. Oh, uh, that makes so much, that makes so much sense, Rumel. Yeah, there, dude, people, it's always the people who are, uh, yeah, I, that's so fun. I didn't see what happened. What, what, ha what, what's the, is there a more detailed story? Too many Alakazam is in NU. Interesting, interesting. It's it'd be interesting to see if Alakazam like does really well in like to you know tournament play versus ladder meta is definitely very different. Um, I don't know if people consider Drake a rapper. Honestly, I get where you're coming from. Are there like yeah, especially like it depends on the album. I mean, he still definitely has rap songs, but in terms of is he crossing genres is like a really interesting discussion. Uh, I was playing your Discord. Gotcha, gotcha. I don't, I don't get why. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. I don't know. I'm a human. I make mistakes. I fuck up, and I, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand the like uh, me making an obvious thing and then be like, oh, I can't believe, like, oh, I got, you know, I don't know. It's just so funny. Uh, what's your shuckles EV points like this one? I have an EV train. I've kept this. I tried to keep this thing as what's it called as possible as like um, archived. Like it's a Safari Zone. I tried to like not mess with it, but it actually has gained some XP and stuff, unfortunately. Yeah, I just I don't get it, Danko. I don't know. I I don't know. Your sweet scent mon. I, I just like keeping it how it was when I caught. But maybe I'll maybe I'll do some with my shark. I think now it's kind of it's kind of past that point. So I feel like at this point, I think I think I might have caught it flash anyway. I probably should go ahead and actually EV train and like pimp out this shuckle at some point. What are the plans for today? Mostly just shunting. Maybe breeding for some profit, dude. Breeding for profit. Yeah. What are the plans for today? Mostly just shiny hunting. I might do some breeding for profit. 
breeding for profit's just so insane right now. Like it's actually catching for profit, pff, not good right now. I don't recommend it. Breeding for profit, fucking insanely turbo good. Um, you can make some like 300, 400k per hour consistently on tons of different Pokemon, tons of different sets. Like there are so many insane Pokemon to breed for profit, and I have tons of videos on how to breed for profit. I'm too dumb to breed for profit. It's intimidating. Learning breeding, especially breeding for profit, is intimidating and it can be tough to learn. But once you get it, it's it's super powerful. And the more people that breed for profit, the less profitable it'll become. And if more people breed for profit right now, it'll eventually bring back the catcher's, catcher's market. You know, it's really just a rubber band. Like the more people that catch for profit, it makes it so that Pokemon that with one time 31s and two times 31 IVs become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So then breeding for profit becomes better and better and better. And then the more people that switch, once, you know, it becomes a breeder's market, people switch over to breeding and breed a bunch for profit. And then it kind of becomes more, then you need more one type 31s and two type 31s. So it becomes more profitable to go catching again. And it kind of, the whole Pokemon market is very genius, very balanced and very rubber bandy back and forth, depending on what's going on. Uh, I have tons of videos on that top. If you Google what Pokemon to breed for profit, I have a video on it. Um, best Pokemon to breed for profit in Pokemon. In this video, I'll link it to you. This video is always going to be relevant. It, it goes over Pokemon that will always, always be good to be bred for profit. Um, yeah, that video is probably the best money making method video. Not maybe the best, but one of the most important ones right now. One of the, one of the most important ones. Uh, there was a rumor. Yeah. The Pokemon devs are like econ economists. And there was a rumor for a while, and I don't know if it's true or not, that the Pokemon devs brought in and like hired economists to solve their economy because it was so fucked. It was, it was, the game was dying. Like back in with their breeding system, back in like 2014, or whatever, I'm, it was rumored they like hired some people to bring in like professionals to, to help develop them some systems that would make it so that their economy would work. And I always say, if, if an economy in a game, in an MMO dies, the game dies. It's just, it's really that simple. It's that important. Uh, thanks for j coming in just to say a nice thing. It's very kind of you, Watch the Throne. I appreciate it, dude. Thank you so much, dude. We're just, yeah, plot twist. We're a giant experiment for economists running a simulation. True. In Pokemon, actually based in true. That'd be a dream job. Yeah, imagine being called in to like fix a video game's economy. Dude, yep. Ditto. It, it's a breeder's economy, man. One times 31s are so cheap. Stupid cheap. Now we need the economists to bring in the Pokemon devs. Fuck, true. Real. Based. Oh, shit. Yeah, but Dungeon Defenders isn't an, a Dungeon Defenders isn't an MMO, right? Dungeon Defenders is a like cooperative single player slash cooperative game. That's very very different, right? If an economy and an MMO dies, the game dies. You you just you can't have yeah. Uh, but I get what you're sorry not to like Dungeon Defenders can feel like an MMO at times. I, I bet Dungeon Defenders Two is much more MMO like it seems, which is pretty neat. Yeah, no, sorry, I didn't mean that was, that was too harsh, Alpha. Devs are mysterious. They really are. They the Pokemon devs are very mysterious. Like, I don't know if anyone's like, yeah, I, they super are. Fuck. Fun fact: the person who Valve hired to design Team Fortress's two economists became the finance minister of Greece. Wow, that is a really fun fact. I didn't know that. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Our defense. It feels so like if you have a play group or like friends, it, it can feel so multiplayer. As someone who plays it as like almost an entirely single player experience, right? Um, I don't know, man. Like Dungeon Fighters feels more like an RPG to me than like a. It's ah, oh, dude, that game. I could. It's so good. We all. I, I fucking love Dungeon Defenders. Uh, did Greece go bankrupt? I bet they. I bet they made loot boxes for their uh, for their citizens. They're doing fantastic. Hidden D's nuts joke. Oh, hopefully not, dude. Oh no. Uh, why is the Pokemon dev team so small? Is it a lack of budget or do they just like to keep their team small to control everything? You pretty much nailed it to control everything. It's probably a mixture of those factors. I don't mean, obviously no one, this is all speculation. No one really knows. Um, the Pokemon dev team is super secretive and they they really don't like to leak their code. It seems from what we understand, they don't seem to like to share their code with other people. I've only ever seen them hire one extra new developer over the entire history of the game. And that new developer was hired specifically to work on iOS code and create the game onto iOS. They just didn't have that experience, which makes a lot of sense. Um, it's 
Yeah, they are very, very secretive with their code. So I, I would probably argue it's probably more than that and than than budget, but I could be wrong. Um, I, I don't know. It depends. Pet is the Pokemon dev team. True and real, not a conspiracy theory. Actually, correct information. Do you think this game makes a lot of money? I ha I just have no idea. Like I actually have no idea how much money Pokemon. Like I, I I don't even I wouldn't even know where to begin guessing. Um. For that number, you just need so many factors. I just, I really, really don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, I, Tower uh, yeah, Tower Defense RPG, D Dungeon Defenders is phenomenal, dude. I think that, I do think the number one thing that holds Dungeon Defenders back, it's kind of similar to uh, Pokemon actually. The main thing that holds like Pokemon and Dungeon Defenders back is the lack of clarity on the progression trail, if that makes sense, you know? Like in Dungeon Defenders, it's really, really unclear within the game where to go next after you like beat the storyline, right? Once you reach like level 70 and stuff, like I would have never known to go for like mythic armor and stuff. Like, I, I, I have no fucking idea, you know? Um, devs call, I have no, I, once again, and anything regarding like money numbers with Pokemon, I just have, there's nothing I can even base it off of. I just have no idea. I wouldn't know where to, I try to make responsible guesstimates for that. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Um, Sunny Gulpin, dude, that's a huge one. Not what I was going for. Gulpin's actually a really, okay, Gulpin D's nuts. Um, nice. If you, I'm going to fuck you if you didn't actually, uh, Gulpin's actually a really hard single encounter shiny to get, um, single encounter uncommon actually a tough hunt um i'm having deja vu hearing you answer questions i get asked a lot of the same questions and i try to just be as patient as possible there's definitely some deja vu uh isn't that a theme that knows the whole long-term stuff is what you want to do oh for sure for sure for sure but i think having a more most MMOs need a little more. I like open MMOs. I like that Dungeon Defenders is so open. I like that Pokemon is so open. But I do wish there was a little more direction, right? Drop of these nuts. Yep. Nice try. I was that duck cheeked up. What are you talking about? It's a normal Psyduck, man. I think you're imagining that. Yeah, it's it's uh it's gaslighting Wednesday, boys. Good one. Yeah, good one, Lucas. You lost once again? No. Okay. What? No. Hello? Okay, I'm going to... I wasn't going to time you out, but now I'm definitely going to time you out for that. I 100% called you on the D's nuts joke before you got it off. I don't know if that was like stream delay. No shot. You could sit there with a smudged face and say, you got me. Got him. No, come on. Have some humility. Osbriolo? Uh, yes. Now, it's only available on certain days, Andrew. Is Riolo still able to be found in the Johto Safari Zone? Yes, but it's only available on certain days. Uh, you do have to go check, actually. But hilariously, um, Re shunting Riolo in the Safari Zone is actually the best way to shunt it, which is really crazy, because obviously it can run, and it's still the best. Even if you get a few runs, it's still ideal. Um, but it, it only is there on certain days, and I don't know the I don't know which day. I don't even know how to exactly check. Someone in my Discord would probably know that a little better than me. I haven't hunted there too much. I know Clue got his there. If you look in the shiny hunting channel on his Discord, they put out the schedule every single day. Well, you look at that. My Discord fucking carrying me as per usual. That's awesome. Yeah, I play I play Dungeon Defenders. I I uh, for those who don't know, um two way different games there's a couple different dungeon defenders game but i would do dungeon defenders one in my opinion is by far the best i really don't like dungeon defenders two um i really don't like dungeon defenders awakening i, I yeah dungeon defenders number one is fantastic uh yeah my discord my discord is fantastic because of my mods and because of the people in it i i almost do nothing in my discord nowadays besides like deal with drama disputes here and there like my Discord totally totally runs itself. Here is 56,000 encounters. It's always cool to get an extra 1k milestone. Yeah, that is pretty cool. That's pretty nice, Jay Zord. That's fair. 
Would you ever shun for a Shalfa? Maybe casually. I don't plan on going hardcore for a because it's just so it's just too expensive even for me. Um, I've heard really good things about Redux, yeah. Yeah, people always say, dude, I can't imagine. Dungeon Defenders has so much content. Sorry about that. Dungeon Defenders has so much content already. I can't imagine a, a, like a whole mod overhaul that adds more. That's crazy. Yeah, Dungeon Defenders 1 Redux is like a, a, a fan-made mod that like rehauls the game and adds so much more. Uh, which encounter counter do you use? I use Gillen's. I do need to test out Archetype at some point. Um, some people swear by Archetype and say that it works super well. Some people swear by Gillen's and say that Archetype is un run unusable on their computer. Like, it just depends. Whatever works best for you. Yo, good luck to you. Good luck to you, Ilbra. Sometimes I hate making content. Made a throwaway TikTok on my lunch break, and it's literally the most viewed thing I've ever made. Meanwhile, I spend months on. Yes, that is the most. Yep, that's that's how it works. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. This is this is like also like, it, from an honest sense, Rumel. This is a huge reason why I'm like a daily content creator in a lot of ways. Um, like look over at like my my retro pat channel is a good now I still make things that I like and I enjoy but my retro pat channel is a perfect example right recently I I spent 50 hours working on a a video about a game called Torum Online a mobile MMO that now is playable on PC very good game um, decent player size it's on mobile and stuff that video got like 300 views um, but I can go spend like. 30 minutes recording a Dungeon Defenders episode and that'll at least get like 500 or whatever. Like it's verse 30 minutes versus 50 hours. Like it's it's just, it's crazy. Um, it depends, you know? You don't need to be a skill to get views. It's definitely, I would say it's a, I would say it's a skill in itself. There's two different ways you can do YouTube. Or not really two, it's, basically, it's on a scale. It's not two different ways. You can do YouTube anywhere from 0% integrity to 100% integrity, right? And I'm probably somewhere in the middle slash like, I, I try to stay on the higher end of integrity. Like, do I make my titles enticing and my thumbnails decently enticing to get views? I absolutely do. But I also try to make them tell the truth. I also try to, them to like not lead you on to something that isn't the case. I try to um, never include like sex appeal in my thumbnails. I try to never include like, crazy gasp stuff um yeah that lucius review is in, it's 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 incredible that that it's insane that it popped off um but it also it's a little frustrating because i feel like i'm i feels like i'm creating similar products of equal production value that aren't getting the same love and that kind of stinks um but well i mean well i'll just keep trying you know i'm not used to i'm not i'm not uh what's well, i i am used to that i'm not it's not new to me you know um the static off the thumbnail yeah um there's definitely like a scale of how you approach youtube and and you could you know you could go what's it called make kids you know how like kids content gets so many views like go make some some whatever kids content and farm up views right uh there's definitely there's definitely lacking of integrity or borderline immoral ways if not immoral ways to get views on youtube and if some people want to do that you know i may not agree with them but more more power to them i try i tried to and i'm a huge advocate of like learning a skill in real life learning some sort of skill uh in real life could even be in a video game when i say in real life just some sort some sort of tangible skill yeah that's exactly rumel learn some sort of tangible skill and then um go teach people that skill i think it's a really good way to quote unquote become a youtuber yeah we talked about the fallout series earlier in the in the stream so i don't want to just repeat everything jay's work but it was very good i would give it a nine out of ten are you a Vans, Chuck Taylors, or Converse? I don't know anything about shoes, man. I I don't know, man. I don't know if I can wear any of those shoes. I have a pretty wide foot. Um, like I, I just straight up can't wear Nikes because they're like all, almost all Nikes are made very thin. Um, I can wear like Adidas, okay. Like I, I can't wear like Puma for like there are certain brands I just straight up can't wear because like they're they're shoes on average. <laughs> God damn it, Danny. Their shoes on average are a little um. What's it called? 
Uh, to some extent, that might happen, DT. I don't know, man. What's that? There's a fucking MF Doom line. This is very cheesy to quote, but I do think it's true. He has a quote where it's like, uh, America is the only country where you can make a buck while keeping your attitude on self-destruct, which I think is... Like, you can, you can be a horrible person and make a lot of money in America real easily. I think it's actually probably easier to make money. If you don't have morals, it's way easier to make money, for sure. Uh, for sure. I think it's just a positive, which is sad, but what the fuck, you know... You're probably living a pretty vapid life. You're probably not happy as a person. So, what's the point? Uh, what's he shunting? Yanma slash Jeltheon slash hoping for a legendary, maybe just for fun. New, yeah, I feel like I've worn New Balance in the past and had good success. I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge shoe guy. I just um, I, I bought like, AC just bought me a pair of shoes. She just fucking spoils me. But I, I I made sure she 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 like picks out shoes like hey like can I buy you these she'll like whatever and I'll be like you can only buy me a pair of shoes if it's below a certain price. So she'll link me like seventy dollar pairs of shoes and I'm like, you know they're fine but I don't like them they're not worth that so, you know what like, she bought me a pair of shoes for thirty bucks like I every pair of shoes I've ever owned I think the most expensive pair of shoes I've ever bought was like hundred and ten bucks when I was fourteen or fifteen and they just you out I outgrew them like what the fuck was the point you know. Um, every other shoe than that, around, I buy like $20, $30 sneakers at Walmart a lot. Um, bought these $30 Adidas shoes, just white, nice little sneakers. It'll be nice. Flip-flops to the wedding. Okay, I, I haven't bought, I probably will drop, I, once again, I'm a very frugal person. I'm extremely budget. There are very few things that I ball out for. My wedding is one of them. Um, I will probably, good shoes 100% worth it. I'm sure they are to people who care about shoes. Um, but if I spent, but like, I, I just don't care, man. I just don't care. Um, yeah, that's how I feel. Xerix. It's going to be person dependent. You know, if you're a shoe, if you're a shoe guy, I super get the hobby. I super get liking nice clothes, liking nice shoes. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel confident. Um, last a longer time. I get it. I super get it. If you care about that. If you don't care about that, I don't know. I'm cool with some, some cheap shoes. Uh, I'll probably get some nice shoes for the wedding, for sure. Um, I mean, I would obviously, I don't see, I don't have a reason not to alpha. It's more just like time and energy, you know, but obviously I'm not opposed to it at all. Alpha. It's more just like time and energy sort of thing. I'm bad at doing collabs on my main channel, let alone, you know, on retro pat. I've ever played path. I really, really like, and I really respect path of exile. But I don't like to play it myself, if that makes sense. Um, for whatever reason, maybe I'm just really bad at the game. Path of Exile, in my opinion, has very inaccurate hitboxes. And I didn't like the way that, like, this sounds very funny, but it's true. I didn't like the targeting. The targeting in Path of Exile felt very clunky to me. Um, and it felt very hard to, like, accurately click on the, like, zombies and, like, monsters and creatures and stuff. I've played Path of Exile multiple times, and I've gotten to, like, this... I, I always play Path or Poe, and I get to, like, level... I don't get very far. Like, level 35, maybe? And then I just, like... I get, I get stuck there every time. Like, I never get very far. Um, so overwhelming. I like... People always talk about, like, how, like, they feel like the Path of Exile skill tree is overwhelming as a new player i kind of loved it i love that shit i love exploring that i really did not mind it um i loved playing i, I like poe and i respect that it's an objectively awesome fucking incredible the devs do a great job um but i've never really been able to get like sucked into it you know maybe at one point that'd be a cool retro pat game to play yeah no that's super yeah super fair alpha i appreciate the suggestion you know yeah I had I had some friends that were veterans that were playing, but they didn't really like. They were kind of the issue was that they were kind of busy. They were kind of busy doing their own stuff, and I would like ask them questions, and I feel like they wouldn't really be able to help me, unfortunately. So, like, I never really got into. Uh, yeah, I acknowledge how. Yeah, that's awesome, Xerix. That's super cool. I acknowledge how damn good Poe is. I just can't really get sucked into it. Yes, Pat. I try, I try, I appreciate that, Lucas. I try to be, man. Pokemon can be a tough game to get into, and I think, um, yeah, exactly, TJ. Exactly. I understand, I try to, that's what I, you know, I understand what it's like to have that veteran friend in games, and I try to, I understand what it's like to try to get into a game, you know, from scratch, so I try to, I try to offer that. 
I'm just that guy for I'm just you know that guy for Pokemon. You know, there's that guy for Pokemon Go. There's Pokedacti. I'm sure there's that guy for Path of Exile. Um, there, there's the, there's the quote unquote guide guy for every game, and I'm really really lucky to be the guide guy for Pokemon, and hopefully try to hold that title for a little bit. But eventually, I mean, I'll get overpassed at some point. I'm sure it'll happen. Yeah, Poe is a Poe is a really cool game to be your favorite game of all time. I really like that pick. I like that pick a lot. Quick question. Uh, quick question. I'm trying to get some friends into Pokemon, and they say they don't get it when it comes to money making in the game. What would your response to my friends be? Sorry for the spam. Hmm. They don't get it. I would just try to. What I would do is I would try to. Firstly, they, it may not just be the game for them, and that's okay, right? If it's just not the game for them, fair enough. But try to get them to care about some sort of goals. It's really hard to care about progression and really hard to care about making Pokien and all of these things if you don't even know what the end game goals are in the game, right? Um, I've had this problem with certain games in the past. Like, why would I spend all this time making Pokien and stuff if I don't even know what I'm going to spend it on, right? So I would let them know, like, hey, like, this is introduce them to shiny hunting, to PVP, to EV training, and XP training, and, and collecting competitive Pokemon. Introduce them to all these things. Introduce them to vanities. Introduce them to PVP tournaments. Um, introduce them to all the. Introduce them to raids. Show them some guides and what that looks like and stuff. Like some people, they'll see all that and be like, oh, I'm not really interested in any of that. So you know what? Not my game. That's totally okay. But show them the goals, and if they're interested in them, then they'll have that drive to go complete those goals and work towards them. Uh, Pokemon without yeah, Pokemon without goals becomes tiring really fast. Pokemon without goals is the worst is like the worst game, you know. Like you need goals to enjoy Pokemon. It's the same as I always compare it to old school Minecraft. Like you could play Minecraft Alpha infinitely with with plenty of goals set, but as soon as you get full diamond armor and run out of goals, a lot of people just quit. But if you're that player who kept building cobblestone castles in the sky, giant glass domes, you know, trying to acquire all of that juicy. Um, uh, glowstone back in like Minecraft Alpha when that was like the rarest resource like you're gonna do a really good job in Pokemon if you enjoy those kind of setting your own goals and making your own adventures within an open world introduce the or you can introduce them to gambling and loot boxes <laughs> okay well that's one option I guess if you want to get them truly addicted wouldn't recommend it though Although the GTL, yeah, dude, the GTL is such a cool system. Be able to flip, and some people just love markets. Like, I get that for sure. So, like, just having, like, just flipping to flip and having the money to flip is, is a fun, if that's, some people just love that, it's fun, you know? If they don't like farming, there's nothing to do. Yeah, if you just don't like farming, you're just not going to enjoy any MMO ever made. <laughs> so, like, it's just not going to, like, there's a lot of people, um, there's a large amount of people who are, like, all of duty kids um not to like dick on the, you know that's fine to play those games uh call of duty cs go like competitive team whatever um if you only play all these types of games and you come play pokemon you're probably gonna fucking hate it it's not fast enough for you too slow it's boring i just don't get it farming's not for gen z um on a large average like obviously i'm gen z and i love farming but on a huge average you're absolutely correct like on average gen z doesn't like grindy games as much gen z doesn't like the newer generation does not like farming they don't it's why why mmos are dying you know like mmos are on the rather not die mmos are on the decline is more fair a more accurate sentence you know um you cut deep pad cod, I, I was a cod kid okay i mean i get it but there are some people who are still a cod kid or still a cod you know player i guess or whatever and they're just you're not gonna enjoy if, you know it's just too slow for you which is understandable nothing wrong with that Curlia from a swarm? Wait, that's incredible, Sloth. I watch them go. You open a bunch and so shut up, Xerix. So dumb. So silly, Willy. Uh, how are your stats looking? Um, I won't. I won't speak on that. I won't speak on that. I'm definitely kind of stuck on my Squire. I feel like my Squire is just 
everybody's been saying this for a while, but it, and it's really, really becoming my squire is just getting feeling so dated. But I still want to try to keep pushing him. If pa I really like the squire. Um, when those love MMOs, yeah. We're holding a mysterious cherish balls. I wasn't a cherish ball investor, but a lot of people did a great job. I have a lot of the other mysterious balls, but I went hard into like great balls. Great balls are the hardest. Great balls and premier balls I went really hard into. I wasn't a big cherish ball guy, but they did great. How are Mystic Mirrors doing? Uh, that's a secret, Coco. Nice. I'm going to start to sell off my Mystic Mirrors at some point soon-ish. It wouldn't surprise me if they went up to like one mil. I'm broke, but how do I get cash easy? If you copy and paste, if you take what you just put in chat, copy and paste it into Google, you'll get tons of tons of answers, man. Um, I have a playlist on my channel called Pokemon Money Making Methods. It's got over 80 videos in it, dude. There's tons of resources, tons of money making guides for Pokemon. Tons of tons of which what wasn't you know two years ago, wasn't the case. Nowadays we have that privilege. We have that you know we have those resources. If you have any more specific questions, Vando? Let me know. But a quick Google search is always appreciated first. I play competitive and fast-paced games and shunt while I'm dead. That's there you go. That's a way to do it, man. That's awesome. Hell yeah, dude. I think it's too late to invest in mysterious balls i can't answer that question for you what i can do is um i've had this question a lot recently do you think it's too late to invest in mysterious balls and i can't answer that question for you that's financial advice i can give you my thoughts and my opinions um and i can show you i can show you the the data and like on pokemon hub and show you like how far mysterious balls have come so far but I'm, i cannot tell you guys whether or not to invest in mysterious balls that's like asking me hey do you think do you think it's too late to invest in bitcoin and it's like dude i i don't know like i don't i don't have the answer for that and my your financial stability and your financial success is not going to be hanging on my responsibility like i can give you the the facts and my thoughts and my opinions but i will not answer financial decisions or make make financial decisions for you guys i'm very sorry um i get those questions a lot um the data says it's not too late in my opinion that's a super reasonable opinion i think that's super fair and if that's your opinion i would go ahead and invest i think that's super fair watch the epoch video i did not I don't think i i don't think so Did I get a second mortgage for Gamba? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I can link it to you, DT. For those who are looking for the website that tracks the data of items, of the price price history, here you go. Uh, I, I'm not a lawyer, proper Pikachu. I would guess that would create legal problems, but I could be wrong. For sure, Xerix, for sure. All very time. Even then, I just, I don't want to be responsible for people's, you know. What stocks should I buy for my Roth IRA? Probably whatever they fucking recommend to you. And uh, any fucking index funds, dude, pretty much. I like a high dividend index fund. Some people say that's not good. I don't, whatever, dude. I don't know, man. Surely you get a shiny next 10 encounters. Uh, since you said so, I think so. Will NVIDIA go up? Yeah, I don't fucking know, dude. I have no idea. What are the devs going to add G-Wagon? What does that mean? G-Wagon vanity mounts. G-Wagon. Is it going to be G-Wagon this dick across your face? Like, I don't understand what the meme is there. YOLO stock advice? Hell no. Dude, go do the safe shit. Go do boring shit. Thought stonks only go up. Kind of. Sometimes. It depends. A good interest rate? Now, I actually know nothing about that. I right, fucking good luck, dude. No idea. I can give some mild, safe. 
I can repeat what the experts say and just give the most safest, most mild investment advice that is nothing new that every fucking basic finance bro would tell you, but I can't. I don't know shit about a safe. I don't know, dude. Um, I am not educated in the finance world. I was, if you want to feel really stupid, I, dude, a thing that I was, if you want to fucking humble yourself, go listen to actually educated people or like go, go listen to like academic debates or academic discussion in finance, not like YouTubers who like make their money off of, um, extremizing and like hyperbolizing markets and stuff. Like, like if you want to like feel stupid, go watch academic debates or academic discussion on um on finance or philosophy <laughs> if you if go listen to a fucking philosophy on even like undergrads like dude you will feel so fucking dumb um i love that shit humbles me okay stay humbled listen to uh philosophy fucking majors based wait my activity on the all of other groups Placement became a grade at the end of my group when I first hold on. I throw a world out there. Hey, good for you, blank blank. Yeah, I'm good, Ramel. Mercedes Benz G Wagon. Oh fuck, I don't know shit. Another topic I know nothing about cars, dude. I I respect car guys. What a cool, what a cool hobby, and what a, what a like a what a pragmatic passion to have. Cause goddamn, is like knowing basic car repair stuff super beneficial in this world. Um, where everybody drives it. Like that shit's super good. Um, I re it's a super fucking good passion. I respect it, but I know turbo. No I know how to change a tire and jump a car and that's it and, then, and maybe I'd, I'd probably have to rewatch a youtube video but like that's I, I i've done both of those things um dude yeah shit rocked oh my god Ramel. it's fucking yeah it's 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 tough wolfgang that's and that's just normal wolfgang i think the stat is i think i think the stat is somewhere around 80 percent of people who choose their own individual stocks lose money um this is why like the milk toast i'm not a finance bro i have no education but the most like milk toast boring take is just to um like invest in like really consistent index funds and just do like boring shit you know Invest in index funds that, that touch a large variety of the market. You know, really basic, boring shit. Um, that's, that's it. I'm an engineer's dream. That will be three grand, fuck. I'm always terrified whenever I go with Casey to like the uh I go with Casey to the um mechanic sometimes just so that maybe they think they think that actually works yeah it's exactly it, it's like that's it's consistent and it works some, exactly sometimes um I go with her to the mechanic just to hopefully think make them think that I'm a car guy and make and maybe you know offer her honest prices and shit they probably do I mean it's probably fine but um I, don't, I, actually, I actually don't know shit about cars. <laughs> I don't know fucking anything. Um, yeah, that can be gutting, Lewis. I mean, yeah, it's tough, dude. And in the dry street today for sure, true and real information. 100% chance of it. It's got to be, right? 100% chance of it happening, I think. True, 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 true. I hate when car bros talk to me, assuming I know the first thing. I actually like it. You know what, dude? If you're smart in a in a hobby or whatever, and you talk to me like I understand what you're talking about, I actually like I'll just I'll just ask questions. I know that I'm dumb, and I'm really good about like I will stop you like throughout your story. I will stop you 50 times and just ask a million questions and like learn. Um, I I would so much rather someone talk to me like I I understand their hobby than talk to me like I'm an idiot. It it's really the way more infuriating. Um, I've talked about this before with um with like uh, electricians or like uh, internet service provider employees 
for a long i always said one of the most frustrating things growing up at like 15 years old was like i'm not i don't have like any crazy formal education or whatever but like i understood like inter internet infrastructure and like how it worked and stuff a lot i did a lot of troubleshooting um i was more educated than your average 15 year old when it came to like computer hardware and like internet infrastructure and stuff and the most frustrating thing was when like I'd have to be there to like let the Comcast guy in and he'd come in and talk to me like I was a goddamn moron. It was so fucking when I probably knew more than that. Like, it was so frustrating. Um, something I've noticed as I've gotten, I don't know if it's because I've gotten older or what happened, but Comcast reps that come to my place nowadays, su like talk to me like I super understand. And even then I have to ask them questions and stuff. And it's become, it's become a lot better over the years. I don't know if it's because those people that were talked down to grew up and knew what it was like and are trying to change that or if it's just because i don't i don't know because i got older i don't know um there's a stereotype mechanic that there's a stereotype mechanics are actually oh the charge thing yeah for sure i, I think i've talked about this with casey the other day um it wouldn't surprise me if like i mean i do feel like mechanic is just it's, it's just one of those it's one of those fields that if you don't know anything about it it's so easy for a mechanic to to scam someone right but the law but i would you know but the large majority probably don't right there might be like one out of every 10 or one out of every 25 or even maybe one out of 100 mechanics that just fucking overcharge the fuck out of shit because they can because their clients don't know any better but it's probably far in between you know um most mechanics are probably just like really fucking passionate it's just a, it's a huge passion project for a lot of people a lot of guys love cars and that's a good thing you know that's a fucking important skill um I mean, that's super fair. I thought someone doesn't mention things. I assume I know. No, I, th I think. Sorry, I definitely am just sharing my side, Rumel. I definitely. Uh, it's not a you know, not a bad thing. I do. I, it frustrates me when people use. Um, I hate when people use acronyms that are like super specific to their field that I obviously have no fucking idea what they mean, and they just kind of like at that point, like there, there definitely are some people who um. There are some people who talk about their passions or interests or jobs like they expect you to understand everything that's going on and that's frustrating because it's like if you ask someone who's like a nurse like hey how was your day and they go oh my god like the icu was crazy today we had to give 50 people ib boo boos and fucking the the beepers kept going honkers and it's like dude, I, what the fuck are you talking like you have to like yeah that's annoying i get your, yeah that's fair um i get what you're saying that per like it's it's kind of like um imagine like imagine as a content imagine if someone said hey what do you do for a living right and instead of saying like oh i make um video game guide content on youtube it's actually yeah right that's usually what i say i, I i'm a i'm a content creator i'm a youtuber i'm a i stream on twitch whatever right um imagine if instead of that i said something like oh i uh Teach people about shiny hunting and the shiny rate in Pokemon and like blah blah and like like you're skipping so many steps like you're it's a social ineptitude to like assume this person has the same brain as you and to like skip all these steps like oh yeah I, I teach people how to make uh 300k Pokemon per hour in Pokemon and it's like well that means nothing to me as an average person like that that sentence is gibberish um for sure for sure for sure for sure um. Fuck, that's, yeah, that's funny, Alpha. That's fair. The Stibides wouldn't stop toileting. Yeah, that's how I usually explain my profession to people. Um, Gotta replace the HVAC. Yeah, that's like a term that a lot of people probably don't know. Yeah, obviously it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's definitely, it's, there's two sides of it. I think Rumel brought up a really good, there's two sides of it. There's that person who explains their job with very field-specific acronyms that obviously you would never know. And then there's the, uh, the people that talk to you like you're a moron. Uh, when you say content creator for a living, do people ever think you have an OnlyFans? I've never had that. I I hope I hope that one day that's the first assumption because that's awesome. Um, no, I maybe if I was a really maybe if I was like a jacked, handsome, chiseled dude, they would assume that. But like, I mean, large amount of OnlyFans creators are just are women, right? Like on average, right? So like. The sad, the sad alternative is if you were a girl and you said, yeah, my, my job is content creation. A lot of people probably do assume OnlyFans, which is kind of sad. Cause like, well, I don't know. Obviously OnlyFans is fine. Do what you want to do, but it's sad that that's the jump to versus like, 
inquire you know they do youtube or inquiring more or whatever um what you don't have an only fans yeah this is news to me yeah i know i'm sorry like more of a girlfriend yeah it's kind of sad that that's the that's the jump you know like that's tough that's that's tough just society we live in a society am i right guys right guys only feats nope that's not nope not uh not doing that yes feet finder i don't know why my chat is so feet orientated um hot tub stream when this weekend at the bachelor party maybe we'll see society yeah that's oof. that's real weird that's real weird imagine like it's comparable it's com comparable comparable imagine like um going to like see a play at like a theater right like going to see like fucking hamilton or some shit and then like after the play walking up to the entertainer and being like hey you should like be, be a prostitute for me tonight and it's like these are whoa these are totally different lines of works like you're you're totally just asking someone to like that's so fucking weird and creepy um however people ask me to start an only fans all the time and it's not perceived as creepy i mean honestly because i'm not really because i'm a guy so i like every little bit, a bit of attention i can get uh but that, you know what not every guy may be like that so to some people to some guys it might be kind of creepy to ask them to constantly start an only fans <laughs> once again i don't really mind it dude there's this whole meme about how like as a fucking, as a dumb, as an absolute fucking baboon brained gentleman, um, I will take any piece of attention I can get, which is, is really cringe, but not every guy wants that. So uh, just draw boundaries clearly, pretty simply. Um, Risque Victorian ankle picks. Ooh, that's too much to ask for. Okay, not, I'm not guilty on that charge, bot. Protect you in the god damn it, Jazar. More power to you. I respect it. Kind of funny to, to I don't know. Um, did you take a YouTube dono to do some stuff that's on your Twitch reward points? Um, it depends. I probably like, I can't do anything. You cannot pay me YouTube donos for like anything in Pokemon because that is RMT, hilarious, like for you know, hilariously. Um, not even not it to make sense. So you can't. Yeah, but I mean if you wanted to if you wanted to YouTube donate to make me talk in a British accent uh, I mean, I'm fair game, you know That is that's on the table Fuck that's yeah, that's a good that's awesome Xerix That stuff's a good meme. I respect it, dude I like the idea of wildly describing your like, impl like describing your job in a funny way. It's very wholesome, Rumel. Oh, Rumel got the points. Did we switch up locations, fellas? Are we getting bored? Have we been here for quite a while? We have been here for quite a while. Oh no, that actually is really sad. I will say, fuck, Rumel, I just saw the permaban for that. Damn, that's my Nilchan, which is really sad. I like him, but obviously if he was fucking racist in game, I mean, that's the per- Ah, that's so dumb. That's so dumb of him, not dumb that he got banned. Um, that's, that's really, really sad. He's the guy who's the, uh, he has like the same outfit as me and is often the Petrowski- what a, uh, what a dumb mistake. What happened? Someone got, no, someone just got permabanned in Pokemon for being racist, which I mean, pretty clear, cut and dry. But he was like surprised it was perma. Damn. We heard the streamer in charge. Someone status shiny sought, dude, those shinies for, I think 250k is the minimum. First time minute to catch. What's up, what's up, DL? How you doing, dude? What a shame. Yeah, I mean, it's sad. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have done it unfortunate i liked my neil john but obviously he fucked up big time uh what are you gonna do surprise permit yeah i don't know yeah 
Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, those people probably get hopefully banned more than you'd think, but what on global? I have no idea if he's in global chat or not. Is it, he's in, uh, is he, he usually, my Chan usually shows up to my fashion contests because, um, he has like an outfit, but he can dress up as me sometimes. Very similar outfit. Yeah, a lot of bands are done in batches. Dude, that's crazy. Good luck to you, Solomon. How many encounters do you have, Solomon? Oh, good morning, Kazzy. How are you doing today? Dude, actually real and true, Lewis. I would love... I've always said, like, I was... I, the main reason I would want Gen 6 added to the game is literally, purely for Shiny Mega Gengar. 100%. Yeah, that's sad, Zol. I mean, at least they get bonked. What have a counter running? My math checks out. I mean, it's, but it depends on... It's just so easy to not shunt efficiently. It's just It just depends on how efficiently you're shunting. That's tough. But obviously, I, I don't know how you're shunting, you know. Kalos is years away. I'm very aware. I've been, I've, I've been the hugest advocate of Kalos is probably 8 to 10 years away, you know. I've been a big, big, big sayer about that. Don't worry. I'm not in any delusions. Do the devs wake up one day and choose violence and that's why it's a bad way? Dude, fucking maybe, man. I, Q, I know for a fact Q wakes up and chooses violence someday. That man can be a sassy developer, which I respect. You know, you need a little bit like, he has to deal with so much shit. I feel like Q kind of gets, you know, you can only, you, as a human, you only have so much patience. Like, I feel like, yeah, when, when Q said piss off, bro, to Xanarchy, like, that was, I I kind of get it. Like, that was, you know, kind of warranted. Like, at some point, you just get annoyed by all the little shit. And you just, yeah, like, come on, you know? I get it. Yeah, that's, that shit's, imagine how sad that is as the de developer, you know? You tell that story? I'm pretty sure Xanarchy made a post that was like, um... Not to roast Xanarchy too much, but it was a little funny. You know, it was a little funny. Yeah, I love Xan, love Q, right? Xanarchy made a post. So Q put out an update log and there was some like mistypes, some like misspellings in the update log or some shit. And Xanarchy made a forum post being like, shouldn't you just like look over it a bit more before posting it? Like as opposed to editing it after. And it's like, dude, you're still a human. You're still, even if you look over, it's going to make mistakes. Like he, Xanarchy was basically like, yeah, just try to... It's Zan's profile back. Yeah, like, it's funny as fuck that he got Q to tell him to piss off. Like, that's an comp. That's funny. Um, but yeah, he basically made a post like, you know, why don't you just take more time to, like, look over it before posting it and instead of having to edit it or whatever every five... And, and he was like, dude, piss off. Like, <laughs> I'm a fucking human. I make mistakes. Like, piss off. Yeah, he said piss off, bro. Sometimes I forget stuff. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it was pretty based. <laughs> Saying piss off is so funny. That was, so, that was a good meme. That was a good meme, you know? Oh, no. That's always... Dude. I love survival, but that shit is devastating, Alpha. For sure. Black and White was released 14 years ago. Whew. Uh, can legendary birds be caught whilst... Or be encountered while surfing? Yes, they can. Uh, but they cannot be encountered while in a cave or while fishing. But yes, they can be while surfing. Uh, yeah, that's strat's been a while, for, been around for a while now. Seems, I mean, I, I've heard good things. I haven't really looked into it too much or done it myself, but I've heard good things. Uh, yo, Pat, what do you think about another PvP mode that swaps Pokemon base stats every month? technically making every pokemon in the game usable for a month um i mean that's it sounds like an interesting idea i like i think more so i see what you're looking you're looking for some sort of seasonal rotation that makes pokemon that aren't usually usable usable 
In my opinion, a better way to achieve that goal wouldn't be the base stat swapping. I but do something like a, a limited dex pool, right? Imagine, imagine a PvP meta game where you like don't have that many um like the only quiver dance user is like master rain and like the power level in general is like much much lower or some shit like that like i think there are some cool meta games you could create um kind of how you know traditional pokemon has different dex restrictions and different er eras like that and then uh in pokemon go in pokemon go every few months they like ban out the most like broken type like fairy type for example is like i think banned out this month for great league um Eel type for example it will also ban out certain um like pokemon specifically like if that pokemon was like top 10 or top 50 they'll ban those for like the next month rotation that's very very cool i think stuff like that in a different in a different metagame could be neat but it kind of encounters the same issues why there isn't ru slash pu in the game which is the there's lack of the lack of players actually playing and queuing up for those varieties in those uh those ranks or in those tiers so like if you have to wait if you have to wait like an hour and a half to play one of those games is it really worth to have that tier like at that point instead of adding a seasonal pvp thing like that i would be way more encouraging of just adding ru slash pu to have straight up hardcore more balance around the actual like main gameplay loop um i, I but i've been saying for since like 2015 2017 that Pokemon needs RU slash PU. And it just, in my opinion, it desperately does. There's way too many Pokemon to only have three tiers. Not enough cool Pokemon can shine. I would love to see like Primeape become like a really good threat in PU, for example, or, or even RU. Like there's just so many Pokemon that could be awesome in RU and PU and make them more usable, add more demand to the economy for those good IV Pokemon. Um, I would I would I would do a lot of content covering RU and PU and really showing off those tiers and really trying to encourage people to play them because Man, could be a lot of fun. Making Uber tiers sit once again. The whole like there's so many ideas for PvP tiers to add, but in my opinion, things like RU slash PU take way higher priority than like Ubers, you know? Um actually like there's just yeah, same with like little cup, like there's a bunch of things you could add, but it's like um yeah, from realistic I, I like the idea though. I like once again, I like I like Pokemon because, and I like the tiering system of Pokemon because theoretically, if you have enough tiers, almost every Pokemon should be somewhat usable. Obviously, you have your niche things like Ledian, which is pretty much always unusable, but like, uh, or even like Krikatoon or whatever. But like, theoretically, you can make things like there, like Shuckle has been a top tier threat in lower tiers at current times. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of Pokemon that have been top tier threats in lower tiers. Which I think is really, really cool. You know, the more the more Pokemon that are usable in different tiers, the better, in my opinion. At the Ho -Oh fight, glitched my game. I went to the mods and told me my error message to be fixed to the message, but it hasn't. I ha I I I have no idea what to tell you. Uh, I would just talk to the mods again. I have no fucking. I don't know what I can do about that. That's awkward and strange and weird. Good luck, dude. That's fucking funny. Um, good luck, man. That's I don't know nothing about that. That's so weird, not widow. Uh, new player here comes in so helpful. Well, thanks, dude. Be my first region to go to the next one. It's really up to you. I am a huge advocate of um. Let me actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reread this for a clip really quick. Hey Pat, new player here. Your content's been so helpful. Well, thank you so much. Uh, just beat my first region. Should I immediately go to my next region or is there something I should do before swapping regions for the first time? In my opinion, I'm a huge advocate. It depends on how much you like storylines. I'm a huge advocate of encouraging players to finish one storyline and then do a little bit of end game grinding, right? So finish one storyline and then breed some Pokemon or EV train or something like that. And then go to another storyline. And then after that storyline, making some competitive Pokemon and then do another storyline. And after that, do some shiny hunting. And like, if you do this kind of um, storyline, end game grinding, storyline, end game grinding, what you do is you do a storyline, kind of get sick of storylines, go do some end game grinding. Oh, okay. Do end game grinding until you get sick of grinding, break it up with some storylines. You can kind of like break up monotony a lot better. Um, and it also lets you find out by the time you complete all five storylines, you'll understand once you actually reach mid to mid to end game, what type of player you are. What do you care about? Do you like PVP? Do you like shiny hunting? Do you like collecting competitive Pokemon? Do you like utility Pokemon? Do you like just simply making Pokien? Do you like vanity collecting? Like what do you enjoy in the game? 
So slowly kind of coming to terms with that and testing everything out along your storyline uh, journey, I think is pretty important. I recommend that. You could prepare a team for the next region. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. A lot of ramble there. Yeah, hopefully that helps. I appreciate the coming in just to leave a nice comment is very above and beyond dazzling. Implementing Umer, blah, 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 Umers. Uber is similar to randoms. So I'm going to enjoy the Um, No, that doesn't solve any. So if you've ever seen my, that doesn't solve anything. A lot of people who haven't played Pokemon very long or don't know much about the game come to the game, want legendaries, and think, oh, just ban them to PvP in PvP, or oh, just ban them to Ubers. But in Pokemon, I've made videos to this in the past, so this information's out there. Not only do you have to balance PvP, you also have an economy to balance, and that makes things way more complicated, right? If Keytran is fucking broken at doing Jimmy runs with Eruption or some shit, or if Latios, Latius, Draco Meteor dropping is broken for Jimmy runs or for farming some Pokeyan or, or defeating the Red Refight, like this breaks the whole system. This breaks the whole mark. Like Pokemon being overpowered, generally in traditional Pokemon, Pokemon being overpowered for the storyline doesn't mean anything, right? But Pokemon being overpowered in PVM and in the storyline in Pokemon breaks and fucks the economy, which is a big deal. Um, that's a big issue. You, you only have to balance legendaries around PvP and traditional Pokemon versus you have to do it around multiple things in Pokemon. That's really funny, Widow. How to find a girlfriend? Uh, play video games or pursue a passion slash interest for like 14 hours a day and they will flock. True and real information. Uh, I mean, unironically, just work on yourself and fucking wait for the right one to come along. That's really it, like... Girls and boys, like this isn't like a gendered thing, but like people admire other people working hard. If you work really hard, odds are someone's going to admire that and uh, approach you. That's what I did. But I don't know. I'm probably not the best person for that. Like I'm a huge advocate of like not living your life seeking for like your lifelong partner because it's just a mat like it's just like, it's just not something you can really force. It just comes with time. Like I would just live your life and then wait until it comes along, you know? Like meeting new people to increase the chances of you finding that person. Like, ugh, man, this is really boring basic advice, but patience with your love life is so important. I meet way too many people who are constantly in and out of relationships or always, if someone's always in a relationship if you if you haven't been single for like multiple years during your 20s that's a huge red flag to me um someone who is always in a relationship is a huge 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 red flag um it means they're probably not working on themselves or they're like super overly reliant or not always like a red flag doesn't always mean that like a red flag um isn't always true a red flag means a red flag means hey this thing may or not be a problem let's be weary of it and adjust accordingly. A lot of people see red flag and think, oh, red flag equal bad. Not really. Red flag mostly means like, be weary of this, right? It could be bad or it could be fine. Yeah, unironically, yeah, relationships are like um, guide hunting, require a lot of patience. Uh, Based alpha. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. I appreciate that you think that, why shaky? Or you don't want for them to come to see if you have opportunity to go in front, uh, see opportunity in front of you. Go for this life. For sure. It's a, it's a, definitely, it's a tough mixture. For sure. It's back to normal. Okay, fixed pog. What's up, my lot? True, 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 DT. What are you shunting? Uh, this spot's best for Yanma and Jolteon. Pretty, like, tough, but yeah. Do you have any tates out? Yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. Uh, I'm not saying make legendaries accessible. I'm saying you get them to play them PvP like I get randoms, but it's not usable for anything else other than the match. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. You know what? Fair enough, Irfan. So you're saying like you want Ubers to like present you. You want you want random Ubers essentially, right? Now, I mean the other issue with that is like how many people would actually play that long term? It'd probably be really fun to play it. It'd probably be really popular at the start. 
That's kind of... Why not, right? It's kind of funny. That'd be a cool, like, temporary PvP lead. Um, make some nice videos, man. Well, thank you for coming in here just to leave a nice comment. That's super fair. That's a super fair point, Irf, and I, I, I like that. You know what? You got me, dude. I like that. Uh, good luck to you, Xerix. Thanks for, thank you for taking the time to explain that further. Sorry if I jumped on you too much. Pat, I feel like you give really good advice for younger men out there. That's... I... I really... I, I like, won't accept that compliment, but I, I try. I appreciate it. Um, I feel like... I'm happy to have his unofficial voice at MMO. Yeah, dude, I... Yes. I, I talk about this with Casey all the time, and I feel like this isn't even a gendered thing. I feel like there's, like, almost no good role models left in the world. It's really, really sad and, like, really, really hard. Um, I feel like... Oh, it's been fucked over the past like 10 like it's really really bad like every I think there's so many young people looking for role models and the only people that brand themselves as that are like scumbags that seem really cool on the surface but are like fucked right um, I've not tried poker road um, and it's really really easy to get sucked into those scumbags it's it's really really it's tough man um dude that's a fucking that's a that's incredible Tommy that's a dream that's yeah that's you guys are too nice to me i appreciate it i hope i can like further and further and further that and get better and better and better that's all i really care about um if you find it hurts and hurts the bp market interest i've heard of like strategies like that true not widow true i appreciate it Drew. um how does a first timer go about shiny hunting smear great question um how does a first timer go about shiny hunting Smeardle? This is a great question. You have two options. You could shiny hunt Smeardle extremely slowly and passively and um, catch a bunch of Smeardle. So you, you could do step one. You could do number one, slow and passive, but make some money along the way. Or step two, fast and aggressive, get it done quick-ish, um, but it's going to cost you some Pokey I would recommend step two if you have any amount of Pokey But if you're new, there's nothing wrong with... The two options are... Uh, false swipe, sporing, and just single encountering and like catching Smeargles or even like paydaying the Smeargles along the way. That's like decent. You'll make like 150k, maybe like 100 to 150k Pokemon per hour. And you'll get like, th like, you'll get very few encounters per hour though, like 200. So keep that in mind, maybe less. Um, versus if you do times five hordes with Lepas, times five hordes with Lepas in the Smeargle cave, in the Artisan cave in Hoenn is so good. Uh, 1200 encounters per hour it's going to cost you around 3 million pokeyen to do the hunt but it's far well above and beyond worth it i yeah if you're gonna if you really just want shiny smeardle i would i would go for that but if you want to passively shunt for smeardle and make some money catching catching smeardles is just a good money making method for medium to beginner players so check that out you know i think it's super fair i think a big issue with rolls is so many people's private yes 100 percent um and it's like it's a like it's tough because I think for a long time, the role models we were marketed. Sorry, if this is too serious for a poke. It kind of is cringe, right? But like, I don't know. It's, it's important. For so long, the role models we were marketed were perfect people. But we've come to learn that people aren't perfect. We're very fucking f humans. We're very, we will make mistakes. So like, I'd rather us advertise those mistakes and advertise that honesty and be like, hey, I fucked up. I'm sorry. And like, give that. We need to give people the opportunity to like, fuck up and apologize and move on. But I feel like right now we're still in that like delusion of role models have to be perfect people. And if they aren't, we cancel culture them, you know, which is like, and there's some, there's some good and bad to that. And like, it's a whole complicated thing. Um, I don't have the answers. Like it's just, it's fucking tough. Um, hopefully we'll see more realistic role models come out where they make mistakes and they fuck up, but they're also trying their damn best and doing a pretty good job. Right. Um, I appreciate it. Why shaky? Look at your spark, good boy. I appreciate Rumel. Uh, yeah, if you, I have a, I have a video on that pasta noodles. If you Google uh, tips to beat the Elite Four Pokemon, I have a video. If you can't find that video, I can link it to you. Uh, dude, unironically, Lucas, yes. I think most people's role models right now are athletes, which is, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty good thing to be fair, um, for sure. But then you have some people that go off, the, some athletes that go off the deep end, but. For sure. That show is so good, Zoro. 
Is it worth to buy a pickup uh, Earthquake Horde Killer? It can be. It depends on what you do a lot in the game. It can be. Thanks for the sub, Pasta Noodles. I mean, like, I didn't have many role models growing up, for sure. I feel like one of the only people I would consider a role model growing up was probably Ray Lewis. Like, it's probably one of the few that I would consider. And obviously, even then, like, I didn't really, like... It wasn't, like, an active in my life role model. It was just, like, a... Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really have any real life, many, if any, real life role models. Home Ledger. A lot of us have put a character right to their. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent, Xerix. And, like, once. Like, we were. I think a lot of people were in that delusion for a long time. Now that we realize, like, oh, you know, they're human too. It's like, uh. We're, we're kind of in that breaking that illusion era. I have a question. You can encounter something about some of the people that says you've killed 100 people on the power planet, one will appear. That is 100% fake news. That is. That is 100% someone baiting you, Jeb. Um, that is super not true. That is a meme and a half. That is a meme and a half. Guts from Berserk the role model. He's probably a pretty decent one. I'm trying to think. I like, I, I love Berserk. Um, I haven't read all of it. I'm on book four. I've re re I watch all the animes. You're struggling, struggler. Berserk, Guts is kind of an edgy role model. Like, I feel like we probably have too many people that are like, yeah, my life's just like his. Like, for those who don't know, Guts was little, like, he has, like, legit trauma and he's fucking crazy. And, but a lot of people are like, oh, like, my life is just like his. For those who don't know, Guts was born out of, this is, okay, graphic warning and trigger warning and spoiler warning for how Guts was born in Berserk. Um... Guts was found as a newborn infant dropped below his mother's hanged body. So like his mom was like a pregnant woman who got hanged and then he like fell out of her as it was, yeah. And was somehow like saved from like the mud. So it, that his, yeah, like he's fucking crazy. Um, having watched watched, even though he's an edgy murderer, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, that is true. He's kind of like a, he's an edgy warrior who, um, is trying to find his place in this world, which I res like. I, I do like guts. Um, I do respect it. Uh, I don't think so. What's up, man? Thanks for the Twitch Prime, dude. I appreciate that, man. Love that you love Berserk. I yeah. I mean, I think I think anyone who's I think anyone who's read or watched Berserk loves it. I'm excited to finally read all of it uh, at some point. I want to wait to get all the. I want to wait to get all of the uh, the books. Until I move into my new place. Because moving all 14 of the deluxe editions would suck. I have, I own five of them. Those books are heavy, man. That's some serious, that's a box. That's a serious moving box. I got an ad, fuck. Yeah, Guts, I really like, Guts' character is just supposed to, like, it's supposed to just represent, like, I mean, it's Guts and Griffith. This is, I don't think this is spoilers, but like, Guts and Griffith are just, Griffith is the over-ambitious, like, kind of giga chad but he's obviously uh, no spoilers um griffith is like over oh griffith is, is over ambitious to a fault and then guts is under ambitious to a fault where he's kind of just floating through life and doesn't know what to do and wants to find the answer um model's a great role model yeah it's a, it's berserk is a beautiful story that's what i'll say great Is it a little edgy at times? Yeah, kind of, but I feel like it's like, meant, it's, it's, if anything's going to be edgy, it can be berserk. It's fine. It's meant to be like, that's okay. Ahsoka? Is that, um, Hunter Hunter? Who's Ahsoka? Fuck, that's funny. I haven't seen all of Hunter Hunter yet. Yeah, the berserk author. It's, it's, it's wild how many manga authors just die young because it's like such a taxing. It's crazy. Than like anime creators and stuff. Yeah, I remember his character. He's crazy. There's traumatizing. Uh, there's a scene that I could. I feel like using the word traumatizing is a little too loose there, but I would say it's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Berserk is a uh, is a. Uh, What's it called? Core memory, I feel like. That's certain arcs. Uh, I'm down. It's, it, that really is up to my Discord 
mods they kind of run my discord like i'm whatever they think whatever the community thinks what's shiny yanma slash jeltion oh yeah i could see that for sure yeah i mean you should definitely shouldn't read berserk before like probably age 16 at least i mean i don't know it's probably fine ish but like it's very No Berserk spoilers, please. The Psyduck? It's just a normal Psyduck sprite. What's up, Wode? How you doing today? When'd you start the Discord? Probably at like 500 subscribers or something on YouTube. It's been around for a long time. Pretty early on. Pretty early on for sure. Once again, my, my Discord is super carried by the pe number one, my number one, my mods, and number two, the people in it. For sure. For sure, for sure. Okay, sorry, one sec, guys. Talking to my fiance for a quick minute. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, it's kind of crazy how many viewers you average. Dude, it's a huge fucking honor. It's it's an insane privilege. 100%. Um, for, for such a, you know, quote-unquote niche game, like, obviously, I think it's bigger than a lot of people realize, but no, it's 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 surreal. I always say, like, I, and I've been streaming... Dude, I'm 26 years old now, or turning 26, sorry. Uh, turning 26 next week? 29th. Um, dude, I've been streaming since I was, like, 13, 14 years old. Like I've been streaming for a long time, um, since like 2011 or no 2013. I think I started in 2013. Just my Twitch, my Twitch account I think is from. No, no, no. I think it might be 20. I don't remember. Let me check my. Yeah, my Twitch account's pretty old. Um, I've been streaming for a long time, dude. I streamed a lot as a thank kid. Thank you for wasting her money, Core Raider. Less than three Yo, thank you for the Twitch Prime, Core Raider. Hopefully the videos have been helpful or entertaining. What's up, what's up, dude? Wait, that's awesome. I might move locations in a sec. Do you read comic books or just manga? I wish I read more comic books and manga. I really don't. You've been streaming half your life? Yes. Now, I wasn't always that consistent and stuff, but... How tired do you get after stream from all the talking? Dude, I, after stream, I am cooked. I always compare, like, streaming, streaming is like condensing eight hours of energy, or like maybe even like eight to 12 hours of energy into like four. Like, what I essentially do is I like condense my energy for the day and I use it all in one burst. Um, I am, after a stream, dude, I just sit there and I like 
drag. I, I export videos. I just like lazily drag. I just like edit and do some. Yeah, I'm just like cooked after that many hours, dude. Streaming for like 10 to 12 hours. People, yeah, people who stream for like 8 to 12 hours. That shit is insane. That shit does take a lot of energy. Um, not to say that, you know, there aren't other jobs that are way harder, you know, but it's definitely energy draining for sure. Uh, not really, Hubert. I'm not a huge soccer guy. No disrespect to it, just not really for me. So I mean some Teddy Grahams. All right. I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna head. I'm gonna switch locations. We're gonna head over to Sinnoh. We're gonna do a quick honey tree route, and then we'll probably either head back over to our Sudowoodo spot, or maybe even a new spot. You know, I, I just I need to change locations. It's important when you're hunting for this long. Yeah, hiring editors is crucial. Yeah, at some point. Pizza rolls after. I wish I had more, man. I ate all those ones yesterday. Fuck, that is funny. Stay safe, Danko. Pattern Bush. If I was doing times five hordes, I would. I don't really want a single encounter there, but I don't know. Pedalboard Woods. There's always so many people there. Got some tornado bros in the chat. I love Trubbish, but it's a times three. I want to be single encountering right now, guys, for rares. I'm rare shunting while I'm this dry. Good luck to you, man, Todd. Tornado bros. There was hail recently. Like the other day in Virginia. It was fucking wild. For like five minutes. In April. How come you never go back to your secret hideout? I hope the devs add more content for it eventually. I mean, yeah, you pretty much answered the question. I wish the secret hideout was useful. It's just like... It's fun to decorate and fun to grind for, but goddamn, is it just like, what's the point, you know? Um, I wish they were more beneficial, but there's just not really any tangible or pragmatic benefits to secret hideouts. And things don't need pragmatic benefits to be cool. Like, obviously, like shiny hunting, there's not really any pragmatic benefits to that. It's just fun to collect. But, man, secret hideouts, there's just, I don't know. There's nothing really, to, I don't have a drive or anything to do anything with. But I, I decorated them once, and then what do you do, you know? Kind of it. Okay. Guys gaming. Great outfit. Fuck, that's cute. They should have it where if you find a secret base, you can take their hideout's flag and eventually trade hideout flags for prizes. That's cute. I like the idea of it actually being organized as like a quote unquote like secret. That's actually a really cute idea. There's so many things they could do. Oh, 100%, Lucas. 100%. Especially, like, long-term, you know? Was that your outfit, Yami? That was a great outfit, dude. Oh, uh, dude, that actually might be... You know what? That actually might be a good shout, Carlo. I could go Repel Trick in Unova for, like, Heracross or Pinsir. That'd be kind of a cool shunt at this many encounters. I could just do that as well at, um, wait, after this shunt. I wouldn't mind doing singles kind of early on here. Let's do some more. Let's sit to honey trees for, for the, we'll figure it out for the honey trees though. I think mysterious balls will come back again. Ooh. Do you think mysterious balls will come back again since cherished balls were a surprise? I feel like. They probably will. I don't. I, how, how many are they going to start doing? The issue is they've already done mysterious, Pokeball, Great Ball, Ultra Ball, Cherish Ball, and Premier Ball. Now, are they going to just 
do like, oh, Premier Ball 2024, like, you know, Ultra Ball 2024, or are they going to do like mysterious, like quick ball and like mysterious dusk ball? That'd be kind of interesting. Uh, will that ruin the game? Question mark, question mark. Now, while I don't think <sighs> mysterious balls ruin the game, I think mysterious balls are probably one of the worst updates for the game's integrity we've seen. I've done a ton of videos. So I don't want to like bore you guys with the same opinion, you know, just my opinion. Um, I feel like Mysterious Balls are one of the most problematic things we've ever seen. The ability to swipe your credit card and get a shiny within two hours is something we've never seen before. Um, the ability to pay to win to a shiny is really, really sad to me. Previously, no matter how much credit card you swiped, no matter how much Pokeyen you had, it would still be like a 24 to 30 hour hunt for a shiny on average, which I think is, you know, cool. Like, it does suck to me that you can now pay to win for once. I, I don't know, like, I would, I would, I would preferably not want to see Mysterious Balls return ever again but we'll just kind of play it by ear uh, i want to go for rock tunnel chance for charmeleon right on it right and onyx are both times five hordes though those wouldn't be good um and then charmeleon's a five percent chance but so like yeah I don't, yeah i'm not really a fan of that personally but that's not I mean, the yanma spot's not good either not that good. Just kind of fun. It's a Meteor Falls gaming. We could do that. There's a lot of things we could do. For sure. I like the suggestions. Yeah, it's just... It's it's fun. I get it. It's, it's Sighting Widow. How do people get stacked 31s? Mainly through, breeding. Yeah, mainly through breeding, I'd say. Like five times 31s and stuff, and four times usually come through breeding. Now, you obviously you can get two times 31s and three times 31 in the wild, but they're a bit rarer. Um, generally, multiple 31 Pokemon are brought into the game. Above three times is like usually breeding. Breeding is really important for the game. It's such a core element. I've spent a lot of time at Meteor Falls. The only issue with Meteor Falls is that it gets really monotonous being in that cave, being in that small cave. It gets very claustrophobic, I'd say. Yo, if that works for you, RS Gamer, have fun, dude, hell yeah. Yeah, breeding for profit is insane right now. It's so enthralling. Yeah, all the all those muddy browns. They don't just get you going. Yeah, true. Real. Like five fucking tiles. Yeah, there's so little room to run or do anything in Meteor Falls. One of the most like depressing spots to hunt, but I spent so much time there. Bark Slather? What's up, Auk? How you doing, dude? Ah, I see, because I'm doing my honey trees. I see what you... I was like, wait a minute. What the heck? Uh, Dude, pretty much any Pokemon in the... Like, the honey trees are so good for me because I love all of these shinies. Like, Cherubi, Combi, Heracross, Pinsir, Munchlax, Mothum. Fuck it. Like, almost all of the Pokemon in honey trees are really, really good for me. Hey, good luck to you, Papa. It was funny to say that out loud, but good luck. You can steal his luck, true and real, actually real. Yeah, Heracross is great. I prefer Pinsir as a Pokemon, and I think I prefer Pinsir as a Shiny because of that, but Heracross's like shiny colors is probably better. They're both good, but I think I prefer Heracross because of, because of its design more, but Heracross is very cool. Okay, this is the last honey tree. Boom, route done, no shiny. Where are we off to next, chat? 
So a lot of recommendations could go Meteor Falls, could go Repel Trick, could go Single Encounter Pattern Bush, could go back to Sudowoodo Spot. What are we feeling? Can you buy more rare candies, please? I would bet money that you're selling rare candies right now, aren't you? Johto? Johto has like no good single encounters aside from Furret. I don't care about that. What's on Raikou and Yu Yu? I don't know. I don't actively play. I have no opinion. I don't actively play. Repel Trick sounds dope. You know what? I don't Repel Trick very much. I'm down to head over to Unova and try that. I have to remember. The problem is I don't remember what, what you need. Um, let's head over to Unova and see what's going on. Yeah, Repel Trick is very weird. You don't see many people. You don't see it that often. I think I... Do I need the level 50 or level 55? I don't remember. Let's double check the Pokedex. So the way I would check this is I would go to like... Oh, like Pinsir Heracross location in Unova. Uh, Route 12. It seems like 50 or 55, depending on which one I'm in. So 55 for Dark Grass. I have my Doug Trio for that. So Doug Trio... I would go grab this guy. I'll put him with Eradicate. We don't need him. Oops. So the way this works is you grab your Pokemon with a very specific level at a very specific location. This is all going to be super hyper dependent on location. You pop a Repel and run back and forth in grass. And since my lead Pokemon is level 55, I will only encounter level 55 Pokemon in above, right? So I think it's like a 40% chance for me to end up with a shiny pincer slash Heracross here. One of them. And then it's like 60% chance for Tranquil slash Rapidash or some shit. Hopefully I get the 40%, you know, get a little lucky. But eventually, you know, it's not it's not a bad, it's a really good chance for, for that quote unquote rare of a shiny, you know? The other thing is you have to burn through a lot of repels here. So we'll see what happens. Let's see if we can get lucky today. I would absolutely hate to get a another shiny Rapidash. That would actually suck so much. A shiny tranquil would be fine. Not ideal, but it'd be fine. Uh, nope. New to Pokemon. Um, can you buy me rare candies? Oh, that's a permanent ban. See you later, mate. I'm sorry. I begging is the most is the easiest. Actually, I'll give you a 24 hour timeout. Um, don't do that, man. If video games, I always say life is really hard. You know what? where you're born into in life um, is really not your fault. It's complicated. It's way harder to climb. Video games are the most even playing field you will ever be given. If you can't play through a video game without begging for free stuff, you are doomed in real life. You're actually so fucked. So you might as well learn it in video games where it's a lot fairer, um, a lot more fair than to be thrown at. Yeah, that's, I have no, I have no empathy for those begging I, I've just, I've never been new to a game in my entire life. Obviously with Pokemon, I have tens of thousands of hours, right? Whatever, 7,000 hours, right? I have never been new to a game and begged for free stuff. It seems so cringe to me. If you've played video games for more than five hours, you understand how much it affects your your personal experience and how it just, what's the point, you know? Um, It's just so sad. I get a free hug? Sure. That's fair. Two billion Pokemon, please. Brew Troy B. I never did. I, I, mean, I looked up. Okay. I definitely looked up like. I guess. What's a good. I don't even have an example. I don't know. Please give me her in part of something new. Oh, okay. Yeah, even that, Lucas, can just ruin your experience, but it depends, you know? What's up, J16? Not giving away free hugs and kisses? I'm a I'm a married man, okay? The only hugs. You were giving 50 more Pokemon XP candies? A hundred percent. That is super true. It's a huge privilege, but I'm not new to the game, right? I was gifted 50 million XP candies after playing the game for 7,000 hours and started in spending a lot of those hours making content to where I've, I've said before one of the only reasons i started taking donations was because once i started playing pokemon for a job i started playing it like 
25% as much. I play Pokemon less than ever being a content creator for the game because I spend way more of my time editing, scripting, brainstorming, and making video ideas, videos. Um, what happened was for like a year and a half of my content creation, I didn't accept donations because I didn't want that to like muddle my journey and what my progress, right? But I reached a point where I literally like didn't have time to make Pokeyen for my for my like Krandos hunt because I was too busy making videos and guides. So eventually I accepted that fact. Uh, not really, unfortunately, Axe Chat. But uh, this guy just commented, my bad, not going to beg again, unbanned, please. Hey, no worries, man. You're not permanently banned. Don't worry about it. Um, if you're still in chat, hopefully you can hear me. You're not permanently banned. Um, it's a 24-hour timeout. Just tank that. Come back in 24 hours. You'll be fine. No worries, dude. Appreciate the no beg again. Not a big deal. Uh, I showed my prom date a video of me doing Jimmy runs, W Riz or not. That is turbo giga unadulterated W Riz. 100%. Good shit, dude. That's... Oh, good luck, dude. That's that's big. Um, uh, that definitely is part of it. That's definitely part of it, Alpha. That definitely happens. Uh, you can absolutely get the legendaries on, a, on an expert. Expert lore is just help increase the odds by getting you more encounters, 10% more encounters. It's in the age thousand yards there. Gotcha. Shiny price checking is tough. Um, I would just try to ask a friend or a teammate or someone you know you can trust. You finished it, dude. Congrats, Blaze. Congratulations, Blaze. Finishing your Pokedex, man. That's awesome, dude. Building the team to beat Red right now. Congratulations, dude. Have you done the Hobo refight? I don't think I have. I don't believe so. Sell Shiny for one yen. Oh, huge. Huge money there. Oh, uh, I have a Pokedex completion guide. I would just, I would Google that. That might explain. Oh, you, I'm sorry. You're asking when should you focus on it? I would beat all regions first, honestly. Or at least have Johto done. One yen's a little high. Yeah, true. Dude, that's awesome, Axchat. Congratulations, dude. Litwick is a great shiny. Dude, that's awesome. Breeding extravaganza is such a fun thing to me. That's incredible. That's that's really cool to inspire that, not Widow. Uh, you don't need King of the Hills to complete Pokedex. But yeah, I have my Pokedex completed. I You have to for for the best XP spot in the game for a lot of things. Best payday pickup spot. I think people are split between... What is, in your opinion, the best payday pickup spot? I think people are split nowadays between Undella Bay and Dragon Spiral Tower. Um, I've had a lot of success at Dragon Spiral Tower. I could never really make that much Pokey in an Undella Bay, but maybe I was doing something wrong. Um, but I'm, I'm Dragon Spiral Tower gang. But some people swear by Undella Bay, especially now that heart scales are a little more expensive. So whatever works for you. I would test one of those. Yeah, Shandalore and Litwick are both fantastic. Oh my God. My keys fell out of my pocket cutting the grass today. Made one lap around the yard and found them. That's terrifying. That's, ugh. Glad you got them. Yeah, for sure. I understand why, Luke, because I just, I've never had, I've never made much money there. For my attempts. Is it worth breeding shinies for better nature slash gender, or is it better to just keep them as a souvenir? Oh, uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. I think it's up to how they were caught. Like, for my Safari Zone Shuckle, I don't breed it because it was caught in the Safari Zone, right? But um, I've bred plenty of shinies up for to make them competitive, you know? Oh, I did not, Tom. Just, just needed to switch it up mentally. Unethical pokey and tip: buy the entire market of heart scales and sell it at an insane price. If someone had enough pokey to do that, 
I'm, like the issue is like something like that like it would never just never really happen like there's so many people that can just go if someone bought up heart scales and tried to list them for like 20k everybody would just go start farming heart scales right even if even at like 20k like it was just the markets even markets are pretty strong markets markets you know sometimes need a little help a little in intervene intervenience or whatever the fuck but like as long as there's profit motive markets usually work pretty damn well at making profit and staying strong they farm hard scales uh, off of love discs you can thief them i have there's some guides out there i think i have a guide on it heyday pick up in and thiefing at uh undela bay and other locations yeah, thief a love disc Yeah, that's a, that's a good one as well, Shock Those are some locations. Is there an auto buy when you underprice a lot? No, but there's a lot of people that make their living sniping stuff off the market. Like there are thousands of eyes, if not hunt, like thousands of eyes on this fucking page at all times doing this because the profit potential is so fucking high. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, GTL bots, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, no, it's literally just people. Like, there have been so many times where someone has claimed like, oh, I, I missed that snipe. I bet it was bought by a GTL bot. And then someone in Team Mister is like, oh, actually I got that snipe and like linked it. Like, it's just, it's just a literally a matter of fucking time and, and speed and ping um, mechanics, like a lot of things. You tell me where I can, but Earthquake and Johto, if you know... I don't know what this question is, PS Gamer. I don't understand. After playing Pokemon after all these years, what's your number one central thing to do? Shiny hunting. I know it seems insane, but I... Yeah, shiny hunting. Thank you for that question. I appreciate that. Yo, enjoy, Jer. Kind of mad people buy stuff so fast, I think it's a bot. Yeah, it's just... It's so cope. It's so cope. People complaining about GTL bots have skill issue most of the time. Yeah, that's probably true. Like it may, maybe it's possible. Like every so often it happens, but it's just not. It's 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 a boy cry wolf situation for sure. Yeah, uh, raids will be huge, man. Permanent raids. Earthquake TM is a which store? It presents the mega store. I checked in Johto. Wasn't it is present? Wait, I don't understand. Are you looking for Earthquake TM? In Johto, I don't know. Like, you could obviously go buy it on the GTL. It's going to be a little more expensive on the GTL, usually. Like, you're going to pay 33k versus 30k. Um, or you could go buy it in the Unova. It's not present. You could, you could go to Unova. I don't I don't know in Johto specifically, dude. I'm sorry. You go to the Unova shopping mall. I know it's in that. If you go over there, the left of Oplucid. I appreciate it, Drew. Dude, good luck, Alpha. That's awesome, dude. That's fun. Uh, this is a super fair question. Um, hey, Pat, this might be a new question, but can my Meowth still pick up an item if it's holding an item like Choice Scarf? Yes, it can. That's like not a noob question at all because at different eras in different time periods in Pokemon, it's operated in different ways, right? So like in 2013, when your Meowth picked up an item, it would go straight to... Um, it would go to like the item slot. You have to like pull it off. So differently, right? And then at some point they changed it and then it's when they changed it back and they changed it. Like they've changed the way that's worked a couple times. So it's a super, like depending on if you've played before and come back to the game, you may not know how it operates at this current time. Is selling TMs for a small profit a good money-making strat? My honest answer is I don't know. Intuitively, I would think it can't be that good, but you see it a lot, right? You see it a lot where people will 
go to the, the shopping mall, buy Earthquake TMs, right, for 30k, and then list them for a little more, like 33k-ish, like here. And people like myself, I even buy these sometimes to save the convenience. Like, sometimes I'll pay the extra 3k to have the convenience factor of not having to go uh, walk over to the Unova shopping mall. So, like, they do sell. I sell. I buy them sometimes. Um, it's good to avoid it if you need a bunch of TMs, but, you know. Um... I don't know if it's a good money making method. I'd love to do a video testing that at some point. I think it'd be super, super interesting. But I, I can't I can't imagine it's that good. I don't know. It's the profits are so small. You have to sell so many TMs. What's up, Lucas? Hi hi. What's up, Fly Happy? To support the little guys? Fuck. Uh, Petrowski OT Mon, either just buying one off the GTL or saving up the Twitch points to buy one. You get Twitch points just for watching the stream on Twitch. It's fun to repel trick. I don't really do this too much. Repel trick is a pretty, it's a pretty unique shunting method. Obviously it's physically the same as running back and forth, but I don't know. It feels different, you know? Yeah, the credit is that's cool. I that's cool, Shaky. Had the worst slash best art of the college of mine today to your class. You know, hopefully leaned more best than worst. What was it about? Unless it's, you know, it depends on what it was, I guess. Um Fuck, that's all yeah, fuck. I've done that, like watched a stream and like confused. That's funny. Oh, I was playing lead. Gotcha, Aisu. Which rewards will be done tomorrow? For anybody who has any points to redeem or wants as anything sitting and waiting, Twitch rewards will be done tomorrow. Okay, since Shiny Charm just wore off, I am going to go quickly. Um, I am going to go quickly grab a small thing for lunch. And I'm gonna grab a drink. So I'm gonna get some water. I'll see you guys in a quick, I'll see you guys in like five minutes, okay? Small break, stretch. Everybody stretch. Stretch break. Um, get water, get a drink, get a snack. I'll see you guys in five minutes, okay? Quick snack break.
Alrighty, I swear every time I go AFK, I just gain viewers. You guys surely know where the real content's at. What's up, what's up, fellas? We're back. Finally, that was a long break. I accidentally made the largest burrito known to man. So I'm probably going to eat this and then food coma, but we'll see if we can uh, <laughs> we can push through. Let's get back to repel trick hunting. What's up, fellas? We like people. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. This might be our B screen, fellas. What's up? What's up, Vika? How you doing, dude? I was fighting this guy for three hours because of my way of doing something code wise in a game. I'm a game developer student. Then we asked the professor, turns out I was the right one. Then I proceeded to show the middle finger to suck my dick. Fuck! That's the most game developer should have ever heard. That's awesome. Welcome back. What's up, you're cute? How are you doing? Who is this? Bring back Nipple Pepe. <laughs> Jesus. I gotta eat my big ass. I don't, can you call it a burrito if you can't close it? What do you call it? I made, left, I made burritos yesterday with Casey. But I fucked up, man. I ugh, I stunk. I made cilantro lime rice, but I put way too much lime in it. And it just... like I, made, I managed to make white rice bitter. <laughs> I fucked up so hard. I was so bummed. But it happens. Yeah, now we gotta go into details, champion. I'm a little quieter, sorry, I am eating. Also make it a goddamn mess. Messy eater dumps so bad. I always, I'm the kind of guy who can't wear white shirts to go out to eat for sure. Make sure you're not zesting the pith of the lime. That's for the white part. Maybe that's probably what it was, man. Look at this. We got chef boys in chat. I had no idea about that. Yeah, pincer or heracross is the repel trick here. That's, I love chimichangas based. Dude, I should have. That was one of the biggest. I didn't make beans last night. I should have made beans. I fucked up, dude. I'm not a huge bean guy. I feel like I usually don't like beans. Like beans, they're a nice filler in burrito for sure. They're they're a good filler. Beans on toast? No, stop. No beans on toast. Beans on, what's it called? A tortilla, sure. The Bamanu. Dr. Pepper beans, I will, I will, I have to give those a try to be fair. It used to work like that RS Gamer Pro, but it does not anymore. They actually nerfed that for whatever reason. They nerfed Shiny Ditto. The meme was, if you had Shiny Ditto in the past, you technically had every Shiny Pokemon in the game because you could transform him into every Shiny, but now you can't do that. 
Kind of lame, if you ask me. Depends on refried beans. I mean, refried beans are the same as any other bean. They're great as filler. I don't like beans being the main point of a dish, but beans are a great filler food. But like beans themselves aren't good. They just fill. Did Onarf piss me off? Yeah, that was funny. It's a funny change. Parko's not here to defend the beans. Even he knows that American beans are better. You just got a shiny pori. Like a porygon? That would be insane, dude. What from? Like an egg, I assume? That's like... Shiny porygon's really, really rare. Yeah, how sick would that be? One of the coolest, I always say, like, one of the coolest screenshots I've ever seen in Pokemon was a shiny Ditto transformed into a shiny Rayquaza. It was a triple battle. So it was Ditto transformed into shiny Rayquaza, Rayqu normal Rayquaza in the middle, and then a shiny Smeargle transformed into a shiny Rayquaza on the right side. It was so cool. A channel chat? Channel chat? I don't know if I have a thing for channel chat, dude. Um... Play Discord chat. Could you get a shiny program from Casino? You could, but it's super, super rare. Like the, I mean, it's one out of 30k. From the, that's a lot of. That's a lot, you know. As local for channel. But I think I got rid of that chat. Default chat is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got re rid of default chat. Or whatever. Overwatch for ice stream. I wish I liked Overwatch 2, man. If I liked Overwatch 2, maybe, you know, but unfortunate the direction they took it. Why does so many people have, um, Entes? I don't know, dude. I've never really thought about that or noticed. Is that true? Yeah, Overwatch 2 was really sad to me. What killed it for you? 5v5? That's definitely one. Dude, I, that was one of the aspects. Um, Really, the engine change. I did not like the new engine. A lot of people didn't even fucking notice it. Um, yeah, 5v5 is dumb. As, like, 6v6 is what made Overwatch unique, and it was so interesting. I don't know why the fuck they wanted. They just turned it more into like a generic Call of Duty style shooter versus a team based like coordinated experience. They took what made Overwatch unique and just got rid of it. Overwatch 2 is really sad. All the balancing changes, they like really went downhill. Yeah, now like, man, Tank already decided. Tank was already the most impactful role on deciding who won the game when there was 2v2 tanks, right? Let alone one tank. Like, what the... I don't know. What the fuck? Yeah. First, a shiny at 7,000 is very lucky. That's incredible, dude. I mean, obviously it's eradicate, but rip, rip, rip GG's, dude. Wait, what'd you get, Isu? Congratulations, dude. Sorry, I'm pitching my lunch. I saw so much gameplay of Overwatch 1 going around since release, but I have not seen a single clip of Overwatch 2. Yep, Overwatch 2 just fell off the fucking face of the earth, dude. It's really sad. 
Blizzard somehow, man, like, I don't know, man. Blizzard really wants to kill every single IP they have. I don't know why. It's like they got they they got bored of making so much free money, and now they want to make it you know, like play on hard mode. They said, "Fuck, we made too many good video games in every genre." Now we now we have nothing to do. They murdered. Her yeah, I, I hate Hearthstone. It's really crazy how yeah Blizzard is just tremendously fucked up so much. Oh yeah, for for sure, for sure, widow. It's really amazing. Like I don't know. Oh, sorry for that noise. How's your day? I'm pretty good today, Jimmy Run. I'm just happy to be able to go live, dude. What's up, man? Dude, I was thinking the same thing, Danko. The sh the Sun Sunturn's a weird Pokemon. It has a weird shade. Easy to think it's think it's shiny, you know? Please send some of a luck. Good luck to you, dude. That's insane. True, 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 Papa. Yeah. They've got to make... They know that they're just trying to int for a little bit so they can uh, pop off and carry at some point. True and real. I just realized his name is Papa Boner. God damn it. I just got your name. God damn it. I have to go re-microwave my burrito for like a minute. For like... For like 30 seconds. Be right back. Alright, I'm back with an important topic. What's what is chat's thoughts on banana peppers, okay? Can we talk about arguably the best vegetable that exists? Banana peppers are turbo goaded. Like super underrated, I feel like. That might be the most W's I've ever seen in my chat after giving a food take. I've never seen my chat ever agree with me on any food take. The food take I gave was that banana peppers might be arguably the best vegetable. They're so, so, so underrated. Banana peppers are so, so, so phenomenal. Um, I feel like they're not offered at enough places or in enough foods. Banana peppers are turbo, turbo good. That's the food take of the day. I think they're arguably the best. Are they are they the best vegetable? I don't know. But I could see an argument. They're at least like A to S tier, you know? Never eaten them? Fair. Is a banana pepper a fruit? Um, no, don't tell me that. Nah, I'm deciding that it's not. I make those calls nowadays. I like peas. The peas and carrots are very good together. Um, peas are just great. It was sandwiches. I had it with. I had banana peppers on my burrito. What's your Subway sandwich of choice? Either the like, is it onion chicken teriyaki or whatever? Either that. 
The chicken onion teriyaki or meatball? Those are the two. Pretty sure banana peppers are fruits? Bullshit. Nah, I just, I, I don't think so. I don't think so, therefore they aren't. Peas are too bitter? What? Sweet pea? Wait. Maybe get sweet peas? There's like sweet peas specifically? Excuse me, like sweet corn? Sweet peas are bomb. Sweet peas are so good. These are awesome. Green peas, I guess. Fresh peas from a garden are phenomenal. Actually worth growing. Actually worth it. Potatoes or garlic? I wouldn't even consider potatoes a vegetable because if they were, they'd obviously be the best. I would consider potatoes just like a starch or like a carb, like just potatoes. I don't know, but I get, but I get you're, you're probably. I mean, I get what you're saying. Banana peppers are a fruit, surprisingly. Peppers are fruits. I'm gonna fight all of science on this one. I'm gonna say I don't think so. It'll be a root, no? I do. I don't know. These classifications get so insane. Scientifically, I don't care that you think they're a fruit based. Google says they're both. I know some things will be like, fuck, some things will be like nutritionally categorized one way and then botom botomically, is that the word? Categorized another. Which is hilarious that that's how like fucking convoluted we are. Tubers, I like that word. Yo, nice, Jackson. Botanically. Yeah, is that right? Is that a word? Did I make that up? Botan... <laughs> Why does that... Have Shut up. <laughs> You're just saying nonsense. What's the hunt here? This is repel tricking for Heracross and Pelipper. I have a video guide on this exact spot. Hmm. Is that like tubers when roots and grows the other part of the fruit to the part of the soil? Like a carrot? I don't know. I feel like I don't understand this at all. There's a lot to learn. Pelipper? No, fuck Pelipper. Pelipper hunt? Where did that come from? No. Fuck Pelipper. Not a fan. Down with Pelipper. Trickshot Absol and Hone Sharp. I've heard that some people repel trick for Absol, but I don't I don't know the location or best method. Hera and Pelipper? Wait, did I? Okay, I'm cooked. Uh Heracross and Pincer. Sorry, chat. Thank you. Hurt themselves. I have no idea, Shuckle. How he hates his best shiny. I hate my Pelipper. If I donate a single sub, will you go hunt Pelipper for 30 minutes? Dude, how fucking cheap of a fucking... How cheap do you think I am? Holy shit. Maybe if you fucking... I don't even know what. Maybe if you... If you, like, donate, like, $100 or some shit, PayPal, maybe I would... No, not even. I, I'd have to think about that. A single sub is crazy. A single sub for five, for 30 minutes of my time plus wasting possibly hundreds other just hunting is insane. Waves $5 bill. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Now it feels kind of crisp. Um, I'd have to think what my price would be. How do I sell my body? What's the... 
What's the price here? Name your price? I don't know what it would be. To go hunt Pelipper for 30 minutes? Um... I think it would be like a hundred bucks. I, th I think a hundred bucks to go, a hundred dollars to go hunt Pelipper for 30 minutes. God, that would fucking suck though. Is that really worth it? Probably not. How much for six sweet cents? A hundred bucks. <laughs> I'm just kidding, that's so dumb. I'll get a handshake. Per minute? Yeah, I feel like that's gotta be. Two McNuggets, the Skittle that fell off my car floorboard. Okay, I kind of want that Skittle though, in 46 cents. The seaweed beans, doing a beans on toast donation goal for a subathon would be sick. That actually is a good meme. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm th like. Yeah, I don't even know if I actually received my $100 offer. Um, yeah, the idea of losing, obviously it's like, I don't know, it doesn't really work like that, but yeah, but no, you're totally right, Jan. Like that just feels like shit for a hundred bucks. It's just literally not worth it. Obviously a hundred bucks, a lot of money, but like this was a lot of time, like a lot of time. Yeah, that'd be a funny sub goal, alpha eating beans on toast on camera on stream. One bean for every single sub in a single toast. Kind of funny, add one bean. Sub goal hunt Pelipper? No, get out of here. Beans on toast slaps, I won't hear otherwise. It's just, uh, I'm sure it's whatever. I'm sure it's not, I'm sure it's, I bet it's edible. It's not good. It's definitely not good. I bet it's edible. Yeah, DT for sure. Okay, Harry Potter. Wait, what, is it, what does that mean? Secret lies just hating for content? Ooh, that's kind of smart. Sub goal for olives? I've done olives. I did. I ate an entire jar of olives in the past for $250. I got donated to do that. And that was not worth it. I would not do that again. Which sounds ins Obviously, that's a lot of money. I sound... How privileged do I sound? But like, dude... That shit fucked up my stomach for three days. Like, that shit was insane. I feel like if I were to eat a full jar of olives again, it'd have to be like 500 bucks or some shit. And it'd have to be like at the right time and it'd be fucking crazy. I'm repel tricking for shiny pincer slash Heracross. This is uh, in Unova. What's up, Iki? No proof didn't happen. I have the video somewhere. I kept the VOD. Um, if we go check, we have the proof. If we go to like my, my channel and go to streams, you can go watch the VOD yourself. Yeah, some people love olives. We back? What's up, Obong? Thank you for the three months of Switch Prime, dude. How are you doing today, gamer? It doesn't make any sense, Jazor. Get out of here. One all. I would do like a eat one olive for twenty bucks or some shit during a subathon. Not right now. I don't have olives, but during a subathon or something. That we'll, think we'll brainstorm some ideas. Do 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 do. All of yeah, but like, what do you? Okay, all of these. What does that mean? What is the? What's the? No, not a god. Um, come on. Also, he's banking off of someone else's sentence there's a million reasons why that doesn't it's not a got em. you guys are getting loose and lazy on your d's nuts jokes i'll say it your got -ems. only one olive had inflation one jar was turned now one olive. yeah that's the real the real metric of inflation Dude, at $200, I'm pretty sure I ate each olive for like $13 an olive, which is obviously crazy, but like it fucked my stomach for days and it was miserable. And it was, I really wish, oh God, I really wish I, uh, there's a million reasons why it's a got him. That's kind of a funny response. Um, I, going into that experience, I'm a very open-minded person. 
going into that experience, I was like, you know what, dude? Uh, humans acclimate. Like, I, I hope that I, I bet that I'm going to like all of this by the end of this experience. You know, it's probably going to suck at first, but then it'll get better and I'll start to like them. It never happened. Literally just got worse and worse and worse. I, all of those are disgusting. Uh, that's cute, Cody. Yo, good luck to you, Obag. That's wholesome, dude. Uh, Arena Trap gets me 10% more encounters. And you need a specific level. Mike did a scuff. It possibly did. Hopefully it's okay now. Sometimes that could happen. What kind of olives are you eating? They were green olives stuffed with garlic. And I ended up picking out, which I thought would be great because I love garlic, but they end, it was so gross. I ended up picking out all of the garlic. They're just eating green olives. Pop repel. Oh, fuck. Thank you, dude. My semi follow question. <clears throat> what do you think so much focus on? I have a video on this, hilariously. If you look up, um, if you look up Petrowski. Content creator tips. I think I have a video on this. I can link it to you. Yeah. I basically did like a 10 tips for Pokemo content creators. There you go. Yo, what's up? Candy olives? Never had them. I need to pop a repel. Oops. Doesn't lures fuck up the encounters, make pop up on higher so as you get more rapid action stuff? Yeah, you know, you don't use lures when repelled. I don't know if I understand. You use uh, repel tricks here. Doesn't lures fuck up the encounters because make pop up on higher levels so you get more rapid action stuff? Um, I don't think it affects. I think it makes them higher level. I, I don't understand this question. I don't think it affects the rate at which they spawn. Mama's so fat, her leftovers were single use. I prefer your mama jokes like that than fucking bad D's nut jokes. I'll say it. What's your plan on which encounter you'll get the shiny? Good question. Way to black olives. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah, I heard people say that green olives were worse to do than. But I, I didn't know which would be better. I don't know, man. I picked ones that I thought would be good. We doing yo mama jokes? Yo mama jokes are actually way better than most of these nuts jokes you guys throw up in chat. I'll be honest. That shit makes me, I get passionate about that, okay? Yo mama's so fat, stockpile three. Bring back yo mama. I'm here for fucking your mom. Just saying your mom or yo mama. Dude, fuck it. I don't, I like that more than these nuts. Bobo's full of your mama jokes. Oh, don't make me like global chat. Oh, man. Heavy Slam does 120. Okay, we got Pokemon, your mama jokes. Dude, I'm here for it, Washi. We've been talking about beans on toast for weeks. We've already hit rock bottom. We are out of fucking con- Dude, we sit here and we all run back and forth in virtual grass. We didn't have much content to begin with, okay? And we're, we're fucking out, dude. We, we gotta scrape the bottom of the barrel for some memes. We have to absolutely just fake laugh and cultivate and create some yo mama jokes or so, I don't know, something fresh, dude. If that's what I've got to do, childish, you know, I'm here where I'm do. I'll do what I got to do, you know. Hope it doesn't fail. Based. Think we're to Lula? I'm the one running back and forth in grass. I love it. Okay, I'm here for it. The Lulu is a there's some good zoomer words, man. Menti B and the Lulu are crazy. I get a trillion dollars. Oh, okay. Sure. Trade me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, try and trade me. On the shot, Eevee trading. Just as nuts. Eevee, a lot of people Eevee train here. Your rapid ash is great here for good luck to you, man. Have you gotten a shiny yet, Widow, or do you need one? A shiny rapid ash. Squeak, squeak, squeak. 
Whenever I move my mic, my little boom arc, boom arc, boom mic arm, what I meant to say, it does that noise. Squeak, squeak, squeak. I'm just gonna get a rapid ash. You don't want one. Gotcha, gotcha. Rapidash has kind of it's cra it's actually crazy to think that Rapidash has become somewhat comparable to like Tentacruel, you know? Like Rapidash dude, back in like 2013. Yeah, one of the best examples of like shiny power creep, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It, it has to happen at one point or another, essentially. Um it can be bad if the pace is quick too quick, but whatever. That's not the point of this over there. One of the most one of the biggest examples of shiny power creep is Rapidash. How like literally shiny Rapidash is seen as like one of the most common shinies in the game. It's seen as like comparable-ish to Tenacruel, right? It's one of the most common XP. It's over here, right? A lot of people come right here to XP train and EV train speed, right? It's a really, really good uh just EV training spot for it's really good shiny spot for beginners, XP spot for beginners, and solid EV training spot for everybody. Um, dude, back in 2013, 2014, 2015, Rapidash and Ponyta were some of the most desired shinies. Like, both of those shinies were literally hunted so much by so many people. They were so desired and so sought after. It's really interesting to see yeah, like how far stuff like that has fallen. Uh, once again, it's not always a bad thing, but it's just, it's just interesting to look back on and have that perspective. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Just slow and steady, Vander. What's up, dude? What are you hunting? I'm repel tricking for uh, Heracross slash Pinsir. Hoping to not get a Tranquil, but it wouldn't be the... Uh, Tranquil would be fine. I just really don't want a Rapidash. Is a Poketuba to get through? I don't know if I get that joke. Oh, a Poketuba. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I remember flipping a shiny ponytail in 2016 sold for like six mil. Yeah, just base price. Yeah, how, dude. Yeah, how crazy is that? Yup, that makes sense too. Like, uh, do you think new players are late? Do you think new players are late to the Pokemon party? Not at all. I almost did an entire rant video talking about this topic because I keep seeing this pop up recently where people are like, new players can't catch up. Like, oh, like it's too late to start Pokemon. And it's just, it's not true like at all. Like, be because. The game has changed so much and we were so bad like only over the past two years i would say have pokemon players like gotten even remotely good myself included like we were just so bad at the game for so long um hordes didn't exist we were so inefficient like the community was so decently small for so long and there were so few content creators so we weren't really like many people didn't have like that much perspective right like maybe you would like see your teammates right and you would see like some of your friends and like their progress but like you didn't see how much progress other people could make you didn't know the potential right the less you're exposed to the less you kind of learn unless you realize how much you can do but when i started making videos when other people started doing huge challenges like flipping to a billion pokemon or whatever um you realized how much you can progress so quickly and like what good methods are good the money making methods like all information just as a whole becoming way more widespread has only really been a thing for the past two years in Pokemon. The game was so bad for so long. Um, and there wasn't, we not, the game was about, we were so bad as players. Sorry, we as players were so bad. I always compare it to like classic WoW, right? Or like World of Warcraft in general, right? People look back at classic WoW and they thought it was like, or like, not sorry, not classic WoW, but vanilla WoW. People thought vanilla WoW was really, 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 really hard. So difficult really mechanically challenging all these things and then classic wow came out and everybody realized like oh shit we were actually just really bad at the game like it actually it you know it was hard in some ways but like all the raids and stuff that were seen as like mechanically impossible and took like three months for anybody to beat were beaten like day one at when they were re-released right because everybody knew the strats everybody had been used to like other more difficult rating and like retail wow um it's 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 perspective and years and age so like as Pokemon's aged, we've gotten so much better at it. And like you can you can the point is you can progress so quickly as a new player. You can reach that of a medium level or end game player within a few weeks, maybe even a month or a few months. Um you can progress so quickly if you seek out and pursue the game knowledge via videos, via forum posts and stuff that just didn't exist for a very very long time. Um it is absolutely not too late in any way to start playing Pokemon. 
you you can I, I would love to do there's a reason why i do challenges like road to pokemon starting from scratch to show people that you can progress super quickly i'm excited that once once raids release i plan to bring back that sort of challenge and bring back a uh starting pokemon from scratch new account and then getting all the way up to completing my first raid and i might be able to do that within a day um probably decently easily we'll see you can progress really quickly it's a lot of you have to understand it does take time it does take energy and it does take game knowledge but if you have those you can progress way quicker than people have been playing it for 10 years you know Ooh, I, I almost did a full rant video about this because it's just so yeah i have 400 hours and i don't feel too far behind yeah it's just it's it, i basically restarted when i came back to the game three years ago because i came back and i had nothing um it's just, yeah, it's so cope of people being like, oh, it's too late. Or people who, it's people who are either, number one, genuinely asking and don't know the answer, or number two, didn't put in any time or effort, and now are like, uh, it's not that I'm, like, lazy or don't, or not even lazy, don't want to play the game, it's that I, the game's too hard, or just, know, some cope shit, you know? This is an awesome dude named Petrowski that makes guides on the how to progress. I heard that that got banned in global chat, so I don't know about that, B-Jammer. Kind of sus. Yeah, no, yeah, sorry, Washi. Yeah, I, I didn't take that from you. Sorry. A lot of times a chatter will ask something and I'll like take what they say and extrapolate to something more extreme and use that as like a, I basically use it as an excuse to talk about that more extreme things. It's more interesting, I guess. And but, but there are some people that have that opinion, right? Uh, they bonked Pat. Yeah, so true and real. True, true, true. That's like a, another Petrowski conspiracy theory that I'm banned. Already went to prison. Yep, there's conspir Petrowski conspiracy theory number three. <clears throat> they able to do alter rates that's it yeah that's awesome dude i started a couple days before the lunar new year event release and i was able to do all 12 raids the community is so good compared to other games if you put effort into looking for answers then you can accomplish anything on pokemon i love your fucking attitude jay zord i super believe that um some people don't and that's okay you know it's fine it's fine to disagree with me that's totally okay but i think it's uh sometimes there's truth to it sometimes it's a little cope you know the prison one is not a conspiracy. There is a person. I can't believe there's actually someone out there with the first name Petrowski. That's so funny. Um, there's someone named Petrowski Hodges who went to jail. <laughs> People that's yeah, we found the articles online with mugshots. Yeah, but that's not me. My name, like I my name isn't Petrowski. And I don't look like that's a it's a crazy fucking story. Uh, that is true, just not a uh, not not that meme. Hold up. The prison one is not a conspiracy theory. So funny. Are you talking in third person? True, true. He pre yeah, fuck. I pre-recorded this many streams and I'm actually just in jail. That's a good theory, to be fair. That's funny. The face matches just perfectly. That is true. That is fair. Paz a saint. He officiated me and my girlfriend's marriage before it was legal here. That makes it sound like... Okay, stop. I don't like that. That makes it sound like something bad. Get out of here, dude. Streaming from jail? I wish jail was that comfy. I don't think that's allowed in 99.9% .9 of jails. Like on the jail computer? Cap. Yeah. Who recorded and guessed all the questions? True, true. That is actually real. Yeah, I... <laughs> that's an insane sentence before it was... Le what the fuck? What are you on about, dude? Woo. Ah, okay, more power to you. I thought I thought the implication was unironically. Okay, okay, good for you, man. More power. I thought, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, whew. Saved, saved. Um, more power to you, gamer. Hell yeah. <sighs> okay. Whew. Anyways, anyways, how many encounters do you guys think? Woo! How what how many encounters until my next shiny guys? Just be honest with me. Give me the give me the honest answer. Give me the real answer. How many encounters, Casey? What do you think? Here, Casey walked in. How many encounters, sweetie? What do you think? Until my next shiny. One more. One more encounter, she said? Okay. Hey, she said one more encounter. Oh, okay, so you're like a fucking liar, is that it? I don't know if I can hear you. You're too far away. 
He's starting drama. She's fucking shmeeming. Aboja on stream. Can you guys hear her? Hi. She's being shy. I heard. Boja streamer. Dude, she needs to go live. Holy shit. Actually real. She actually needs to go live. Actually real. Hi, Boja. Everybody said hi. Thank you guys for being so nice. You're literally too far from the mic. They can't hear you. You not speaking. Can you guys hear me? Can now, yeah, now me? you no. can. Now, okay, you're now they can. Now they could hear me the whole time. Yep. Casey hates when I say stop the cap. Stop the cap. He hates when I say it. Now we can. No, you could the whole time, right, guys? No, don't gaslight me, chat. No, they didn't hear that. I whispered it. Stop the cap. Yeah, now chat's saying it. Yes. Stop the cap. Stop the cap. True and real. Uh, I'm okay, but good luck to you. Pop a boner. <laughs> Hate that I have to. Oh, see you, sweetie. She's peacing out. All right. I want to be honest, guys. I'm going to be honest with you guys, okay? Because I'm always honest with you guys. You know what I want to do right now? I want to go play Guitar Hero. So I'm going to go ahead and call the stream there. A nice little four hour stream. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, always make sure to leave a like on these videos. It just helps out a ton. Dislike if not, that's okay. Subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon videos. I do upload every single day. I also stream four times a week, Monday through Thursday on Twitch at 12 p.m. ET. Discord's down below for updates on my content. And if you want to go above and beyond and support my content, if it's helped you out enough or entertained you enough in the background while you grind Pokemon, YouTube memberships. Twitch Primes, Twitch Subs, and PayPal slash Venmo literally allow me to do this. I could not do it without those people. So thank you. If you're on this list at the end of the stream, you allow me to do it. You're fucking awesome. You're cool. You've got a big smile, which I appreciate it. Uh, and thank you guys so much. Have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Peace, Areno. Alrighty. Let's uh, raid someone on Twitch. Who should it be? Who's live? Let's see. Stick around for the raid, guys. Like I always say, the best raid. The be blah, 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 what the? F why do I miss people? The best way to spread Twitch cheer is by spamming smiley faces for the streamer to hear. Okay. So let's see who we can spam our smiley faces to. Here, Froth just went live. Go ahead, give him some. Uh, Go give him some memers. I'll see you guys later. Peace, Sereno. Go ask Frots about hockey or something. Love you guys. Peace.